Centuries ago, famed mathematician Katherine Johnson wrote, The whole idea of going into space was new and daring. There were no textbooks, so we had to write them. Now, the United Federation of Planets stands on a new brink of exploration and learning, yet again pushing beyond the bounds of contemporary understanding, and for a new dawn proclaim proudly once again, these are the voyages of First officer's log. We are detouring to Bolius. After receiving a priority one communication from Starfleet Command and the Judge Adjutant General, it appears that Commander Garahar's brother, Ven, has been accused of attempting to sabotage the environmental control sensors of the planet. Ven claims that someone else was responsible for the sabotage, but has refused to give out any more details of the plot. Even more troubling is the Federation magistrate appointed to the case, a student of the famed retired Admiral Nora Satie. This magistrate not only claims that he will bring down Tox's family, but that this will be the beginning of a crusade of justice that will tear through the Federation and bring the guilty to justice. Yeah. Hello! Thank you all for joining us. Yeah, you know, uh, th welcome to the uh, sorry, welcome to the voyages here on Rook and Rass. Uh, we will be following the adventures, the adventures of the USS Serenitis as it continues on its mission of exploring the Gamma Quadrant. We are using the Star Trek Adventures RPG system from Modiphius Entertainment, and as a reminder, we are in no way affiliated with Modiphius. We just really enjoy their game. I'm John Kennedy, and I'll be running the game tonight. Joining me is Amber Jacoba as Commander Halada. Matt Quiet as Lieutenant Commander Tox Garahar. Sean Parks as Lieutenant Commander Keed Haskins. And Danny Delisle as Lieutenant Rosrin Irax. Thank you all guys for joining us. Um, remember tonight that as you watch us that on Twitch, uh, that you could purchase Cluthulus, which will help us throughout the game. Cluthulus can be used to purchase momentum, threats, and rerolls. And you can also, with your donations and tipping, uh, you can create your own NPC that we then work into the game. Uh, yeah, so, all right. Tonight, as you have all found out, you are all on board a runabout on your way off to do a mission in the Gamma Quadrant when you've received a communication from Starfleet Command and the Judge General. Um, Tox, where would you be on the runabout? It's currently on its way back to your homeworld. Oh, I'm probably either like half piloting like there i'm sure that the commander is sitting next to me but like i'm there because that's my that's my spot um like up up at the front to the to the left from behind yeah okay as you are heading back to bolius you've already made it through the wormhole you are currently going you're about an hour out at this point when you receive a priority communication directed towards you it is from a fleet admiral Chithris. Uh Am I familiar with Chith Chith 
Chathris? Uh, you see from the, the signal that it comes from uh, the Judge Ad Adjutant General's office. Okay. Uh, yeah, all open hailing. Okay. Uh, Fleet Animal Chathris is a Belodo, which is a bird-like species, which has okay. like a primarily a large metallic beak right here. Um, Lieutenant Commander, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing quite fine. I see you are already on your way back to Volius. Yes, sir. I wanted to just talk to you very briefly about the charges that your brother Vex is currently facing. Or, sorry, Ven is currently facing. Uh, absolutely, sir. So it appears that your brother's been accused of trying to sabotage Bolius's, uh planetary control systems. Currently, is also like primarily the weather grid. Um, he has denied any such action, but he was arrested inside one of the uh, inside the primary processing hub, and he was possessing like pretty sensitive information on him. But he has denied any wrongdoing, even though a strange power surge fluctuated throughout the planet's power grid. I see. Now, we understand that you've been on a mission of importance for the last couple months, but we have to ask, would you know anything about why your brother would try to sabotage the planet's systems? Um, as far as I knew from my last communication with my brother, I will admit has been longer than it perhaps should have been. Uh, he was quite happy, and I hadn't heard anything from him to suggest otherwise. Um, so uh, unless there's something that I've been, I've not been made aware of, uh, I can't see a reason why. I, I don't see the motive, but also I don't work in security. Well, once you arrive on planet, we will take you to speak with your brother as well as his attorney. But you should also know that we've appointed a special judge for this case. We've appointed a Justice Serto Valoran, who is going to be taking over the arbitration of this matter. Uh, judge Serto Valoran has a long history of being a exemplary judge, and it is there are a lot of eyes on this. Polius is one of the main important worlds in the Federation, and part of our rebuilding effort is trying to bring more planets in line, repair damages from the war. Um, but I just want you to know in advance that should your brother be convicted, they're looking at being sent to a heavy penal colony out on the edge of Federation space. I understand. I, um, I hope that that's not the case. I hope that we can find the true culprit. That is what I'm hoping for as well. We look forward to seeing you once you reach Polius. Admiral's of office out. I'll, like, close the hailing? I guess yeah, I have to hang up, too. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and I'll kind of, like, turn to Halada. Uh, I assume that she's sitting there. Mm -hmm. Or she's wandered off, much like a cat. Like, <laughs> knocked all the glasses off and was just like, whatever. Um, <laughs> Commander, um, I know it's a large request, but this doesn't feel right. This, that, my brother is not one to... I mean, he chose to go into the Engineering Corps on Pol Bolius for a reason. This isn't this isn't quite normal for him. I was hoping that maybe we could assist, maybe intercede in assisting with the investigation. Um, Lieutenant Irax is uh, dogged in her pursuits, and I would like to to use that to see that used to uh, help clear my brother. I. I'm somewhat concerned that it sounds like they're going with guilty until proven innocent, so I am very much on board with this idea. Excellent. All right. Um, is anybody wanting to do anything else? Um, you have about an hour before you reach Bolius. Otherwise, we're just going to fast forward to arriving on the planet. Is there... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I wouldn't have hidden it at all. Like, there, we all knew what was going on, I assume, before this, so that I didn't see a reason to hide 
anything yeah. there wasn't marked like secret talk in communications. So then, then uh, Rosrin is just going to say something like, I wonder why they brought in a, a special judge for this case. I mean, it, would they want more more attention on it than there already is? Is there some particular, was there something particularly wrong with the judges that were there already? Curious, just wondering. I'll look at the commander who's way more on the pulse of politics than I am. Do I know anything specific about this uh, judge? Uh, that is a good question. How about you roll for me your insight plus command? Insight plus command. What's the difficulty? Difficulty will just be one. Do, 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 do. Does diplomacy or galactic politics apply? Definitely, especially galactic politics. And I got two successes. Awesome. Right. So what you know is is that um, the special justice Sir Valoran studied underneath um, Admiral Nora Sadi. Admiral Nora Sadi was one of the previous premier justices working for the Judge Adjutant General's office but was forced to resign under what some consider dubious circumstances about 10 years ago. Some claim that she was forced to resign in disgrace. Um, some believe that she had gone too far with trying to um, uh, find guilty suspects where there were no guilty suspects. And from what you understand, uh, Serto Valoran uh, has an exemplary record, but possesses a lot of the same uh, qualities, where a firm believer in right and, law, uh, right and wrong um, a firm believer in that the law is black and white, and that if when he is put into a case, um, he often brings with him his own crew of investigators and is known pretty much to take over an investigation, even from planetary authorities, which doesn't make him too well liked, but the Federation loves him because he is very efficient and he has a flawless track record. Okay, so I will definitely share that. Hmm. Interesting. I so mean, basically up and comer, an up and comer trying to make a name for themselves. I would say he's had a good, like, if he was a baseball player, he would have a few good seasons in him already. But he is still obviously trying to make a name for himself. And um, it would not be out of the realm of speculation for him to one day be the head of the uh, JAG office. Um, are there any. Were we sent any documentation on what exactly happened with the power fluctuation? Uh, actually, you can request that, and it will arrive at your terminal. Um, are you are you looking at it privately, or is it somewhere where other people could look at it? I'm gonna open it up and look at it uh, openly. Like, there's no reason. Okay. I at this point, I see no reason to hide anything because even if my brother's guilty, like, it's a crime. What mm -hmm. are you gonna do? Okay, so when you open up, um. Uh, pretty much the docket. Um, he's been accused of sabotaging the environmental control sensors and also with hacking into um, the planetary control uh, grid. Uh, these are very serious crimes in, on any planet in the Federation. Um, what makes it particularly shocking in this case is that he is quite an accomplished systems engineer. And at the time that he was doing this, uh, he appears to have caused a massive power fluctuation throughout the, enti the entire northern hemisphere of the planet. Uh, Bolius has been upgrading its weather control system to include new trinium processors, or sorry, trilithium processors. Um, this regulates an enormous amount of power, and when these systems went offline, power grids went out, uh, the industrial replicators went offline. Uh, it caused panic and confusion for about three hours. Um, they managed to get it you know, under control relatively quickly, where your brother was, of course, arrested pretty much within the first hour of this happening. And then the Boleans were able to get their grids back online. Um, when you look at the data that, that's been presented, it looks pretty cut and dry that the moment that he entered the, um, the, the room, uh, he accessed information, and then next thing you know, 
everything's going haywire. Okay. Um, but go ahead and uh, roll for me. Um, engineering plus reason. Okay, and then um, is this going to apply with computers or? Computer? Yeah, I think computers would work. And then um, what exactly am I doing, I guess, is the question. I want to see if one of my talents applies. So you're looking at the information that's been presented, and you're looking to see if there's anything that doesn't seem right. Um, Can I apply computer expertise? If Does it involve, would it involve programming or study of a computer system? No. Okay. All right. Uh, what's the difficulty? Difficulty is one. Okay. I feel pretty okay with that. Uh, I got one success. Fantastic. All right. So you look at their conclusions, and while it does support that, from what you're able to, well, from your experience, um, a lot of these um, systems have a lot of redundancy. And while your brother is brilliant, it doesn't seem quite right to you that he would be able to knock out half the planet's power grid and take the environmental control sensors offline, either on his own or without requiring much more help. Does this look like potential industrial espionage? It like, does. Okay. Uh, Rosrin. Yes? Looking at this, um, does it look like this Like this isn't quite right? And I'll kind of like walk you through what I'm seeing. I don't know if you're, I don't know that your engineering is great, but your, like, your security is better than right. mine. So. Yeah. Um. I can try and look at it too. Uh, do you want me to roll, or do I see the same thing he does? Or uh, go ahead and roll. Okay, that would be uh... reason plus um, science. Oh, okay. Um, I got one success. So you reach the same conclusion where it's the information's not adding up. It, while you can see it going one way, it doesn't look like it's like the you know, the the smoking gun, as it were, to prove that he's guilty. Yeah, I'll say no. I, I see the same thing you do. Um, I'm curious has has uh, the the brother given any reasoning like why he was there or any explanation for what he thinks happened. I, I don't to, see it here in the authorities. files, do I? No. In fact, it looks like he is only given a very short statement, which is really just, he was just in there working. He does not know why the systems went offline. And it is his appropriate place to be working, right? It is. Is there does any, it, Oh, go ahead. Is there any security footage from other stations? Like, who else was there? Um... While there is footage of him walking into the room and using his um, passcode to access the room, um, the power grid gets knocked out and all the cameras are knocked offline. Okay, so leading up to that, there's no one else around? Nope. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It was at night. Uh, the security who uh, met him at the door, they were just on regular, like, you know, patrol duty. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary at the time. How long how long was your brother working before this all went to hell? You mean for the day or like the number of years? No, no, no. That day. How long was he at his station before it all went south? That's a good question. He left at the end of his shift, which using human or earth terms would be around five o'clock. Uh, but he returned around seven thirty alone. Mm. And then how long was he there before it did I mean did he just put in his passcode and it just all went? Uh, he enters the room. Uh, there was no footage inside the room that could be recovered. And within a few minutes of being inside the command room, everything okay. went to hell. All right. So it was just a few minutes. So what you're saying is all, that no one else was in the room where it happened? <laughs> no. That's, That's going to be in my head now. <laughs> I know. No. Same. That is my gift to you. Bad. Bad. The threat level just grew. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> On transporting to the planet, Tox is arrested as an accomplice. 
<laughs> um, is there any more questions? Uh, looking kind of on a wider scale, in the northern hemisphere, is there any el- anything else that was going around, going on during that time that this power outage would have positively affected? So there actually is a list or negatively system- affected. That's that's what I meant. When the uh, when the environmental control systems went offline, the weather briefly grew to be incredibly just turbulent. Um, storms appeared all across the planet. Uh, tremors appeared. Um, it appears that like you know the as the power grid was fluctuating, sensors went offline in almost every major city in the northern hemisphere, and this is being considered particularly troublesome because that is where they are moving a lot of the trilithium through. Trilithium is a powerful component for warp reactors and for fusion reactors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it's just considered incredibly concerning that those, there was a chance they could have exploded if they had, uh, gone offline. Hmm. W- were there any casualties? Did anybody get hurt, like, while the power was off and all this stuff was going on? Thankfully, no casualties. Several people reported getting sick from the weather or from being frightened, um, there were a couple of people who had to go to med bay because they bruised themselves by falling or they were trapped inside of, uh, uh, rooms that couldn't be opened but apart from that nothing else it looks mm-hmm. to me that primarily the concern was having the fusion reactors go critical mm-hmm. is is there a, a bank of volius on like a main hub in the northern hemisphere by chance the bank of bolius is well known uh, all throughout bolius and also throughout the quadrant uh, but you do know that the bank of bolius at prime headquarters is in the northern hemisphere Okay, and let me guess, all security footage from that area is gone. Uh, you would have to access that information on the planet. Sure. Uh, j- and just so you know, uh, John, uh, we're at 11 threat now, because uh, chat really did not like my comment. Good to know, good to know. <laughs> so, so uh, Tox, are you, are you thinking that this was a cover-up for something bigger? I think that it's awful convenient that the bank is right there and there are there's too much of of a coincidence here for it to not be investigated who knows we'll, maybe we'll get there and it already has been but if it hasn't that indicates to me that there is at least some lax interest in actually solving this like they've already got their man so why worry about it how oh, so difficult just... would it have been for him to actually do that in the time he was in there. I couldn't have done it by myself. Yeah, I mean, he would have had to have people with him, working yeah. with him. With with another crewman, then yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. I'd have another set of hands, but with just by myself, in that short of time, I don't think I could have done it. I, it would have been much easier with at least three or four people, I assume is what this looks like, right? I'm just making mm-hmm. stuff up at this point. Mm-hmm. No, that's very reasonable. Mm-hmm. So, I... I, I can't it there's something uh what do the humans say it's something fishy here yeah because if there's if it's something that isn't reasonable for one person to have done alone and them to just be like we have a person and we're done does not make a lot of sense and, and it's also possible that they they're looking for accomplices and he just hasn't divulged them if there are some and we just don't have that information if, again it's possible that we're missing the security report and he, it's just there, but I... I mean... I, that is I, not the way it's being presented. I mean, unless your brother is a, a, a mastermind in espionage, it doesn't make sense that he would go back after his shift, go into the, the control room, put in a code, and then boom. It, I mean, he, you, if he's as brilliant as you say, you would think he would be smarter than to do it like that. He would have built in some subroutine to have done it you know, automatically at the, you know, a specified time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, he's not a stupid man, but that, this is not, this is not where his skills lie either. Like he doesn't make giant plans to knock out a power grid and potentially rob a bank. Hmm. Well, when you talk to him, are you confident you'll be able to tell if he's telling you the truth? Um... Yeah, I, we've always been pretty open with each other. Once once we got past being little kids, we've been pretty open with each other, I feel. 
So he'll either mm -hmm. just not answer me if it's something bad, or he'll tell me what I expect, <laughs> that it's not really what's going on. Mm. Well, I don't have any more questions. Yeah. Before we get there. <laughs> I'll continue like looking through the, the information because like I have nothing else to do. But mm. yeah, that's about it. Well, uh, then we are going to move on to the planet. Um, arriving at Bolius, uh, it is a hub of interstellar commerce. There are ships here from all across the quadrant, including several Ferengi ships, both arriving and departing. Um, when you set down at uh, the uh, facility where your brother is currently being held, he's not in a jail right now, but he is being held at the Starfleet Command uh, outside of Bolius. I'm going to call it Bolius City. I could not find the actual name. Um, the only thing that happens, um, who is piloting? Halada. Halada, probably. <laughs> yep. Um, the moment that you set down on the planet, um, you just receive a very routine um, security warning that says that you have to keep your doors shut. Um, they're currently moving a, a volatile, con uh, volatile cargo through the uh, starport at the moment. Uh, when you look out your mirror, you see a small convoy moving through um, through the starport. Um, it's an industrial one. There appears to be eight tactical officers with phaser rifles. Um, honestly, they're not walking with like any like military precision. They're just keeping an eye out. And there's about two dozen Bolians transporting four large containers. They're round, and they have a lot of uh, blinking lights on them, including a massive uh, gray cylinder on top of each of the small ones. Um, once they pass through. The security screen is lifted, and you're allowed to depart. Do I know right. what those? Do I know what those were? Those were tri uh, trilithium resin storage tanks okay. uh, that were currently being moved through there in order to be safely removed from Bolius itself. Okay. Um, you are all Starfleet officers. I'm not going to make you roll for this. You know that the resin from trilithium is incredibly explosive. Um, it often has to be removed from the planet where it can be disposed of properly. It does have some applications in photon torpedoes and other weapons, but it's incredibly dangerous to keep around. Okay. All right. And, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, when we'll, yeah, we'll head out and head towards Vin. Uh, when you arrive at Star, uh, Starfleet Command, you are actually greeted in the lobby uh, by a large looking uh, Bolian who has two aides next to him. And then you see a person in the. Uh, red formal uniform and his pips to note him as a member of the judge adjutant general's office. Um, as the man walks up to you, uh, he starts to introduce himself when very loudly he is interrupted from across the room. And then a gentleman in a long black business suit surrounded by four aides hurries up there, gives the man a look, and then seems to kind of just push his way to the front of the conversation before it's even started. You do notice that the bullion and the human look a little annoyed. And the man introduces himself as uh, Justice Serto Valoran. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Rajan already doesn't like this guy. <laughs> uh, what, what's, his, what's his rank? Uh, he technically does not have a rank other than uh, Magistrate, uh, which in the Federation is outside of Starfleet. It is part of the Federation's uh, command structure. But it generally, uh, if you have to guess, it usually has the rank of Commander, and in certain situations, as Commodore. Okay. You are Lut Lieutenant Tox Gar Lieutenant Commander Tox Garahar. I am. I am Justice Serto Valoran. It's a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, I just have a couple questions I'd like to ask you in my office, if you don't mind. Justice Valoran, can we meet the other people here as well first? It's that he kind of looks at you, narrows his eyes, but then he steps aside. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the member of the Judge Adjutant General's office, who is a human, steps forward and goes, uh, my name is Michael, uh, Commander Michael Jacob. Uh, it is a pleasure uh, to see you all here today, and welcome to Bolius. Uh, this is the Bolius Head of Security. Uh, sorry, all my notes all at once. Batir Khan. And the Bolian steps forward, nods his head, he is in a very kind of like neat and smart military outfit that you assume is reserved for the Bolian military. And uh, he kind of gives like, you, um, he gives talks just a very kind of like, you know, like a stern look. As if he's not going to judge you to the length that Valoran has, 
but you can tell that he is definitely taking you in and kind of scanning you with his eyes. Sure. Um, well, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce the rest of my uh, crew, my, my crewmates. Uh, this is Commander Halada, first officer of the Serenitis. Uh, Dr. Haskins, our chief medical officer, and uh, Lieutenant Irex uh, is our chief of security. Uh, you tell that, that Valoran kind of steps aside and is just waiting for his turn to start. But um, the commander gives you, he shakes each of your hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, we um, are. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we are very interested in helping get to the bottom of this, whatever that entails. Um, my chief of security is very interested in helping go through logs and things like that. Um, and we're, we're here to assist. Well, I should certainly hope so, says uh, Michael uh, Commander Jacobson. I'm sorry, <laughs> did you not receive our uh, most recent communication? Did we? We've, we've yeah. been having problems with our planetary communications grid. Um, Lieutenant Commander Tox, you've been named as your brother's attorney for his trial. Well, that's awkward. It's by his request. A little less awkward. Okay. <laughs> um, that's interesting. So am I to be questioned by the justice as the attorney or as a member of the uh, accused family? Lauren will speak out just bluntly. It will be both. Excellent. We just have some questions just to to sort out your relationship with Well then, uh, please let's uh, let's get started, uh, Commander. If you wouldn't mind joining me, and also Doctor and uh, Lieutenant, I would be happy to have you along. Absolutely. Um, at this point, they're going to go deeper inside of um, of the facility. Does anyone want to split off at this point? It's not required, and you're all invited to go with Tox in deeper into Starfleet Command. Um, but does anyone have any other actions they would like to do instead? I I don't want to break off, but I would like to talk to the Bullion security officer. Okay. Um, yeah, as as Rosrin, and Rosrin's going to kind of try to fall in step. I assume he's coming with us as well. He is. Okay. Um, and and Rosrin's just going to say, I'm I'm curious. I'm not familiar with um the Bullion law structure is it customary that a uh, someone in custody can name whoever they like as their lawyer they are allowed to name a family member as their lawyer uh i I do believe the federation would have preferred to have appointed their own magistrate or counsel in this case but uh, the accused was quite insistent i see interesting hmm yeah, I mean that was the only that was the only question he had because it seemed a little odd to him. So you know, and he doesn't know too much. He's like, I'm certainly hoping that while we're here, I can get a a good, I can learn quite a bit about bullying security and how you do things here. Can I'm always I... looking to learn things that we can integrate into our own procedures. We are quite efficient here. Uh, we have to be, being that we are one of the. Uh... One of the premier plans conducting business on. I mean, you've heard of the Bank of Bolius, which is known throughout mm-hmm. the quadrant. And it's at that point he kind of looks to his left and you see an enormous billboard in the distance for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this must be um, quite a blow to have something of this magnitude happen. It is, especially from someone that we've trusted with so much. And he gives a sideway glance over at Tox. Mm-hmm. Can I get a, a read off of the security officer and then the guy? The what? Who, what's the human's title again? I'm sorry. A uh, commander. What? What? I'm not not so much his rank, but what? What is he doing? What's his he job? Is, uh, he is an attorney. He is the Federation okay. attorney in this matter. Um, you believe to be helping to represent your case. Uh, however, you are the primary judge or primary lawyer. Uh, can I get a read on the bullying security officer? Uh, just. 
something, I, I don't know, it feels like he's awful suspicious for something that doesn't already add up in the wrong direction. Uh, go ahead and roll your um, insight plus security because you're trying sure. to just ascertain his physical features. It's easier for you because you're a fellow Bolian. Sure, sure. Uh, difficulty one. Mm, okay, so I got a success. However, <laughs> I also got a complication. So I would like to use uh, Born Near Warp Core, uh, which is one of my talents that says when I suffer a complication from a task, I can roll an effect dice, and if I get an effect, I ignore it. Do it. And I do ignore it. Thank God. Uh, let's not start that way. Uh, but I can't use it for the rest of the scene. So. Oh, good uh, to get that out of the way early. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I got my success. Can I, I'd like to also, look, I want to hear what you have to say, and then I might have another question with spending momentum. So he's highly suspicious of you, but that's not what you wouldn't have, I mean, you would have expected that anyway. It appears he's suspicious of you, but for reasons that he's not told you yet. As if there's more going on here. Uh, it's not just, oh, your brother's a criminal, and I so I think you're a criminal. It feels like he's holding <laughs> back something. Okay. Um, so I would like to spend a momentum to figure out if I know who he is. It, like, in the grander scheme of Bolius. Okay. Is his family connected to mine or not connected to mine? It, like... It, was he once part of like Starfleet and flunked out somewhere? Did we go to Academy together and I was much smarter than him and that's why he hates me? Did you date a family member and yeah. hurt them? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of options here, I'm sure. Um, because you only got one success. I'm going to say that without <laughs> accessing a computer, you're not going to be able to bring up more about him. But I can no. tell you as a Bullion, though, what you've noticed about him. Sure. One, um, he holds the rank essentially of Colonel in the Bullion military. Um, you know that uh, people who stay in the Bullion military and don't just join um, the bank's private security forces or the Federation tend to be Patriot. They tend to be very devoted to Bullius itself, uh, which means that if he's in charge of planetary security, he has had to work his way into pretty much safeguarding, you know, his homeland. Um, the other thing that you notice is that Bullius being what it is, it can be a very competitive place. So he got to where he was either by bribing a lot of people or being very, very good at what he does. And you're getting the impression just from his demeanor, he's very good at what he does. Okay. Okay. Um, excellent. Uh, yeah, then that's all I wanted. I wanted to right. get a better read on him. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I mean... Since I'm talking to him, could I try to get a read on him, too? Sure. Go ahead and roll. Um, see if I can... It's more difficult for you because even though you've been around a Bolian for a while, you've not been around a Bolian quite like him. Uh, so go ahead and roll your um, Insight plus Security, but it'll be difficulty two. Okay. He's a kind of a cagey fellow. Indeed. Indeed. That's actually a, a good uh, roll for me, so... All right, let's see. Yes, yes, I will take a nine and a one for three successes. All right, so um, so giving so adding on to what you uh, I told Matt, you could just tell that not only is he holding something back. If this was a case of industrial espionage, then it would be they wouldn't be moving this quickly. You can tell that this is actually literally a case of planetary security. And the fact that they've brought in so many high-playing figures means that not only is there something that you've not been told, there's something of grave importance. And I mean grave. They've brought in mm -hmm. an outside magistrate, and the outside magistrate has essentially supplanted his authority. Mm -hmm. So uh, Benthier is, you know, one, not liking that he's being kept out of the loop, but he's also feeling, like, really annoyed that he can't conduct the investigation as he would. The mm. Bolians are, they're not, the Bolians are not Paclids. The Bolians are, you know, an ancient civilization. They're proud. Uh, like I said, I've said it many times, dedicated to commerce. So the fact that an outsider has come in and pretty much taken control of the situation from the Bolians themselves, not only has I got to be angering him, but there has to be something truly magnificently of importance here 
for this situation mm-hmm. to play out. That they're not putting out publicly or whatever. Yeah. No. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. All right. Uh, and then if you all want to stay as a group, we're going inside the judge at the general's office. Um, entering the office, you see that security is a little more heightened than usual, but all that means is that there are more guards standing at each door. Um, you can definitely tell that there are many cancer, many, many scanners on you. Um, and then, but you are led into deeper into the facility. Um, and then you are led into a large, uh, room, a conference room, uh, with a table with a holographic projector inside and with plenty of refreshments already set out. Um, within a couple minutes, uh, your brother is let in. Uh, your brother is not in restraints of any form, but he does have an armed guard. And the moment that the door opens, the guards see him in, and then they step out, and you can hear the sound of a mag bolt uh, clicking into place. So you're now secured inside the room. Uh, your brother, who looks to be in pretty good shape, is still wearing the clothes that he was wearing a week ago. Um, he kind of just slowly steps forward, and then he opens his arms as if to give you a hug, Tox. Uh, I will greet him as appropriate for Bolius. I, I, that's hugs, that's fine. Like, yeah, I will greet him like like there's nothing wrong. Um, and then while we're embracing, I'm going to quietly whisper, don't worry, Ben. I've got this. Uh, then you can feel, like, physically, his hug kind of tightens a little bit. And then when he steps back, he kind of looks nervously to your the three of the uh, the rest of you, as if he's not sure what what to make of this. Uh, Vin, I don't think you've met uh, my first o- the first officer on the Serenitis. This is Commander Halata, uh, and then our doctor, um, Doctor Haskins, our chief medical officer, and then our chief of security, uh, Lieutenant Irex. Uh, they happen to be with me. Um, when we came. I am sorry that we're meeting in these circumstances. I'm sorry as well. I... I don't really know what to say. Um... But, Tox, I think I'm going to just... plead guilty. Well, let's... uh, Is it just us in the room? Just you. Uh... Ven, come on. First of all, the, you couldn't have done this by yourself. So either you're part of a massive conspiracy, which doesn't seem like you, or this isn't you, and you didn't do that. Do this. So which one do you think that is? And he's just kind of stammering, and he's quiet, and you, none of you need to roll to see that he looks incredibly nervous. No matter what happened, Vin... You are my brother, and I will make this as good as I can. So why don't you tell us what happened? He steps over and sits down in a chair. I'm not hearing. It's not. What? I wasn't hearing you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, he was stammering. He was about to speak. Okay. It wasn't my fault. I received a communication to go into the primary computer core and to upload a last minute upgrade. And I was, it had the administrator's um, uh, certificate on it. It seemed like it was necessary. And I was told that it was a priority and that if I didn't do it, then, you know, there was a chance that the reactors could get unstable. So I, left dinner immediately, I returned to work, and then when I went into the room and started to upload it, the grid started fluctuating, like wildly. We had cascade failures across the planet. I did my best to contain them, but it blew several of the primary fusion reactor uh, hubs. Um, Just power was overloading everywhere. We managed to scram the reactors so that they didn't explode, but it caused chaos across an entire planet. And I, it wasn't my fault. And I've tried telling everyone that I was acting under orders, but no one believes me. 
So why are you so willing to throw out a guilty plea if you know you're innocent? His eyes immediately drop down to the table and he doesn't say anything. Do, do you still have a copy of the order or the program you were told to upload? They took my data pad and they've ransacked my apartment. I, they, they won't let me have any access to any of my files. Hmm. Well, that's that's what we we're here for. I mean, that's exactly what we're here for. Um, I'm sure that uh, Rosrin, you wouldn't mind making sure that we get that information. Um, doctor, can you give him a once over just to make sure that he's in good health? I'm sure that I'm sure that he was kept nicely, but also there seems to be. There's potential for uh, manipulation here. I was just thinking that um, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to get much with my tricorder, but if we can get access to the medical facility, I can do some deeper neurological scans to see if there's any kind of coercion or any kind of you know subliminal subliminal <laughs> some programming done to him to make him do these things. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I'm trying to read off Bolian names and in a hurry from my notes. So, um, do you want to scan him with your medical tricorder? Yeah, let's just do a, a high level scan. Make sure he's physically okay. Maybe see if I can get any kind of abnormal readings neuro neurologically. Okay. Now it's going to be a high difficulty for this one. It's going to be a difficulty of two. Okay. And that's going to. What kind of role is that? Oh. Uh, that is going to be your medicine plus your insight. Medicine insight. Okay. Can, 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 um, I, can, I, can I assist? How would you be assisting with the tricorders? Pointing out, like, Bolian uh, physiology stuff? Because I know about Bolians. Actually, I'll allow that. Yeah, I like that. We have some momentum to spend, too, if you guys want. Yeah, we got, can, we're capped on that. Would field medicine apply to this at all? So when attempting a medicine task, you may ignore increases in difficulty for working without proper tools or equipment. So it since would. I'm trying to do a little more high-level scan, I'm trying to finagle the, the tricorder just a little bit more since I don't have access to a neuro bed and things like that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to buy a momentum to roll yep. another dice. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay, so that is a. Uh, so you said insight medicine? Mm hmm. I got two, one. Two successes. Okay. Uh, would you like to use that additional success for more information on top of your roll? Yes. Okay. So you don't find anything neurologically wrong with him, other than you can tell that he's incredibly stressed out. Um, you would see that with help from talks. Apparently not been sleeping well, but you notice something else in your scans that uh, wouldn't have come up that most people would have overlooked. You can tell in the pigmentation of his skin what appears to be the remains of bruises around his eyes and around his wrists. I'm going to, I'm going to pull Tox aside because obviously his brother's been through enough and I'm going and to... Real quick, these are more than a week old. Okay. I'm going to motion, you know, Rosrin and Halada over to me and very quietly because obviously, you know, I don't want to stress out the brother anymore. So there's nothing neurologically that I found, but I don't know if you noticed Tox around his eyes and wrists. It's some bruising. It's about a week old. So would the bruising around his wrist be from, could I tell it's like from restraints? The bruises have faded too much for you to figure that out. You can okay. only tell that the bruises were there. And around his eyes, like, side of his face, kind of, or like the, like there was damage to the occipital region. Um, from what you're able to tell, remains of a black eye. Okay, that makes sense. So, I, I can't tell, from, the bruises are too old, but if I would hazard a guess, maybe he was restrained and beaten until he agreed to do something. My brother's not known for like physically fighting, is he? No. Okay. Didn't think so. 
Um, and, you know, the, the readings also, he's stressed, he's sleepless. I mean, I could probably give him something to help calm him down a little bit, maybe make him think clear if that's what you want to do. Let's hold off on that, maybe give him something to sleep tonight so that he can get a better rest. Uh, Commander, would you, um, would it be okay for you to, I'm about to order my commander to do something. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> commander, I'm concerned that my brother is still wearing the same clothes he was wearing a week ago. I would like to speak with him if uh, someone could arrange for him to uh, be set up with a shower and a fresh change of clothes. Yes, I can absolutely get that chain started. And that and was also it very clearly Tox's polite way of saying, uh, Dr. Uh, Erex, both of you, please also leave. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I'll, I'll go knock on the door to have the guard let us out since it's locked. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find soap <laughs> as they leave. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go support Halata if, you know, while she's making her request. You know, I think <laughs> let's go ahead and keep. When he changes, let's keep what he has on. Maybe some scans might show where he was. Maybe it'll give us some more clues. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so the three of you exit, um, and um, then won't look you in the eye. He is staring down at the glossy black finish of the table. Uh, I will sit down across from him. Um, so then... How's how's stuff been going here? Well, I'm responsible for blacking out half the planet. How about prior to a week ago? How was thing? How are things going here? Everything's going great. I I got a promotion at work uh, over two years ago. I've uh, been leading the the efforts to replace the the weather control systems. Um, got my certification and working with trilithium and with with overhauling the computer systems, um, started seeing this girl. Um, he kind of winces and looks down. And uh, no, that's that's it. What girl? What's her name? At this point, he's clammed up. Like, and your brother, while he was not the most outgoing person, you don't remember him being incredibly skittish. But it looks like he's just not talking to you at this point. Um, if you'd like to get more out of him, um, that would be your presence plus command. Um, so what I'd like to do is use my experience within the war and kind of like the tough positions I was in and divulge some of like the harder, more like rough parts of the war to him and then use focus my focus for lead by example to get him to maybe open up does that make sense yeah okay make your roll i danced all the way around that i'm spending a moment uh, what's the difficulty on that uh difficulty is going to be one okay so um you said presence and command yep yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna spend a momentum for that because uh that's not my my forte um uh but but I guess four successes will do it. Four successes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, those uh four to six and a crit. Well, congratulations. Uh so he looks like he wants to not tell you, but something about you sharing your experience with the war causes something to break. And he looks up at the around the room at the cameras and he leans in closer to you. I'm in a lot of trouble and I, you were the only one I could call to come and help me. And I knew they wouldn't have let you come here if I hadn't declared you to be my attorney, but it's not Starfleet that I'm worried about. So I started seeing this girl. Uh, she was at one of the local Dabo joint. Um, wonderful. She made me feel happy. And the other day, so over a week ago, these gentlemen approached me. Um, it's not so much they approached me as they... Um, so I, I went back to her place, and I got a little drunk. And, um, uh, she, you know, it's, it's 
she's so sweet. I, I thought about introducing her to mom, but they 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 hit me and they threatened me and they threatened our family. And um, they told me that someone would approach me with the information or with with information that I was supposed to put into the mainframe and that the person would introduce themselves to me at the right time. And that if I didn't go along with it, they would kill me. And they they had a lot of weapons to back it up. Um, and one of them was very, very tall, um, smelled just awful, the worst smell ever. And I couldn't see his face, but I could just, just, just reek. It smelled like this human, human plant. Um, onions? It's the worst. Um, but... Yeah, I'm in a lot of trouble, and I'm worried you're in trouble too. And I, they're not. There's more going on here, and like I want to tell you what it is, but you have to promise me that you're going to at least protect yourself first, because I don't want to see you get killed. Are they the ones that uh, tied you up and beat you? They are. Then I want you to understand that my commander won't let anything happen to me. Um, she might look like one of those cute little human animals, but she's not. Um, she's quite fierce. Um, and I trust the lieutenant and the doctor, all three of them. They have my confidence, like you, like I have, or like you have my confidence. So trust them as you would trust me. If they have any questions, please work with them. Understand that no matter what happens here, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to get caught up in this. Okay. But I do need you to start being completely open with me. Getting caught up with the Dobble Girl is not unexpected. It happens. I've seen it happen on other. In other places, Dobble Girls are Dobble Girls. It's not a big deal. What were they after at the bank? Do you know? Yeah, it looks like he goes... I, I don't know. I actually don't know. And so at that point, for the crewmen who are outside, um, after you leave the, the, the room and you're walking down the hallway, you see the magistrate like a storm coming down the hallway almost like it was planned like they rehearsed it with his four attendants two on either side behind him, and he is making a beeline for the room are you yeah. guys getting in his way at all absolutely rosrin is absolutely <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah rosrin even has a talent for this <laughs> actually <laughs> yeah it's a dauntless, so if he's going to be, like, intimidating or whatever, and he's trying to, like, just come through and intimidate everyone to get out of his way, he gets um, bonus to that, to be able to, like, get in front of him and, like, okay. not be cowed by him. All right. Um, he is walking forward with such a, a I want to say, with such fury almost. Um, no, fury is not a good word. With such determination. Um, so you're all just you're you're planning your feet, or mm -hmm. are you all trying to engage with? Them? I'm gonna get in front of him, plant my feet, and say, "Excuse me." I'm gonna put on my best Cleon frowning glower. Yeah, Rajan's gonna stand done. shoulder to shoulder with her. <laughs> yeah. He stops about two feet away from you, almost as if he expected you to move, and then he just takes a slight step back. But you can see his gaze, not even looking at you, but looking at the door behind you. I have official Federation business. Stand aside, please. The accused is still speaking to their lawyer, and you can wait. I have the accused and one of his family members, who may also be implicated in the case, inside that room. And I have, and reaching kind of with his hands, does a dismissive like, snap, and a pad's immediately put into it. I have a I have the highest authority behind me, and I'm going to need you to step aside. I'm gonna look. I have document. Starfleet protocol. Is there any way that I can like use that to like 
get him to like shut him up be like actually you know <laughs> like <laughs> um so uh halada you wanted to see the pad first mm-hmm. okay um as he holds up the pad you're able to scan it it does in fact have a writ of authority from the office of federation security and you can see that it also has classified on it which you can it looks official but you can tell that just from experience that is like a military matter but it's being handled by the Federation. So it looks pretty legit and pretty serious. Um, as for you, you go ahead and are you trying to just understand? Like, just, and like you're, are you trying to form the perfect argument to make him shut up? Essentially, yeah. you know, like, my bureaucracy trumps yours. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll either your insight or your presence plus command. Okay. So I'll we'll take... And is anybody and, assisting, including like that really uh, fierce-looking Klingon? Yeah, I can assist with the <laughs> the yeah. Gnarl. And can I use a Starfleet protocol? Because mm-hmm. what, what Rosen's trying to do is is trying to think of in his head, like if there's anything that you know, like you can't interrupt him. He may be a family member, but he's also his attorney. So, you know, like come on, you know, like really. Um, Go ahead. Uh, it'll be difficulty two. Is um so with the Starfleet protocol, that's just if I get beneath one of them. Is that how it works, or do I get an extra? It'd be beneath focus? your um, right? Not okay. not the uh, presence or it would be beneath the attribute. It'd be, it'd be beneath the command. And yeah. you're maxed on momentum, so buy an extra dice if you want yeah. to. What's that? We're, we're, ma- maxed, we're maxed on momentum. momentum, so if you want to use an extra dice. You yeah. got the fury behind you guys tonight. And um can I um also use one of my one of my values? Um every being deserves a benefit of the doubt. In other words, he's trying to like undermine this guy getting a fair trial, like being, you know, having access to every resource. I think that applies perfectly. Yeah. So and what am I rolling for the assist? Uh, you'll be rolling the same thing, either your um, insight plus presence, um, or actually, also, if you want, you could also use your control in this one, and then um, you will be ro- rolling your command or your security. So I'll roll the three dice, and, and what do I roll for the value again? Just give me a heads up. Or are, you do using, uh, are you using a point of determination? Yeah. You'll automatically get two successes. Okay, so I'll have two successes, and then I'm going to, like, roll One these. Success. And I rolled extremely well. I will take, that will be a third success, and I rolled a one, which will make two more. So that's six, six, seven. five, six, somewhere in there, two, one, and then two, five. Yeah, plus the one from Keith, so that's six. Yeah. So building off of what you what you were telling me, it would be well within Starfleet protocol for you to be like, yeah, one of the accused is in there and his family member, but his lawyer is in there and they're having a conference and there's a minimal amount of time that they need. Um, you do know that he can waive that with the writ of, uh, of authority, but it would take time. And so as you say that to him, he can, you can see his cold demeanor just kind of become not angrier, but more frozen as if his mm. like emotions drain out of him. And uh, he kind of looks over him, and one of his attendants starts furiously typing on a data pad. And he just looks at you all like, you've bought about five minutes. I'm going to get the authority to go in there to speak with them. But I will make sure that you are all added to my list of the interview. I do not see why, apart from the loyalty you have as members of the same crew, that you would have to someone accused of planetary treason. It's very interesting that you would put your necks out like this. In the Federation, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. He deserves fair resources, and he deserves time to make his case and bring up evidence. He deserves time with his lawyer. Very well. As I said, you have about five minutes. Did we generate uh, momentum off that role? Oh, yes, you did. Sorry. Okay. Um, see you then, sir. <laughs> Roger yeah, said, we generated a then, lot. Sir. Sorry. Uh, going back inside the room, 
Mm-hmm. Or wait, no, did anybody, say, did anybody have anything else to do with the magistrate? Well, we went, like, over cap. Is there anything somebody can think of to, like, create an advantage in this situation and spend some of the momentum that's going to vanish? You could, uh, you could, Rosarin could circle talk him into revealing what the classified information is. You could do that. Rajan would definitely try to do that. Wonderful. So Rajan, <laughs> he's giving this this passionate, just very like in your face speech, defining the rights of a Federation citizen. Um, as the aides are fumbling to figure out how to get through you, because you know you've you've countered their excellent legal maneuver. Um, as you look at the information on the pad as it's been presented, you recognize several familiar codes, because you know. Maybe you were up late one night just going through, you know, like the Federation guidebook or also working on a starship. Maybe <laughs> That's you also very in character stuff. for Ross Rain, just eh, I'm relaxing. I'm checking out Starfleet protocols and codes and stuff. That's very relaxing for him. Yeah. Um, so- specifically what you see for some of the uh, the charges that are listed on there. He has been given the writ of authority because there is a threat not just to Bolius, but to Federation security in general. You also mm-hmm. see uh, one of the codes on there. Rumored affiliation with a criminal syndicate. And then you hmm. also see on there possession of volatile materials. Hmm. So Rosrin says, Sir, I am, I am, uh, I'm with everything going on. I'm sure this was just an oversight, but we were not aware that this was not just a matter of bullious security, but also Federation security. We were not also not aware of these crime syndicate charges or these, these possession charges as well. I'm sure that that was about to be rectified. Narrows his eyes again, like a rock, but you can see that inside behind his eyes, he carefully formulates his response. Then if you're aware of the gravity of the situation, and surely, Starfleet, you would endeavor to do your best to protect the safety and sanctity of the Federation and its law. But as I said, it will take but a moment. And again, the aides behind him, furiously working on this. They're getting on their comm badges. They are typing on data pads. Um, they are consulting with each other, and you can hear them saying, like, no, use Form B. No, we have to use Amendment A. No, we have to use this. <laughs> um, I'm going to I'm gonna come talks and let them know time's running out. Um, Back inside the room. Um, before you get the, the communication, because I've been trying to scale each one for how much time they've bought you. Sure, yeah. Um, so Ven looks at you, and just he's explaining more about just, like, the situation of how he was hurt and how he didn't know what was going to happen. And he, and, and, you, and he's just not crying, but he feels defeated. Sure. Um, after listening to a, a little bit of it, I'm going to make sure that I get the best descriptions I can of the people that attacked him, and that also the, the person that came to give him the information, and the Dabo girl. Um, species, uh, okay. basic description. I can note it in my tricorder. I assume you can take notes on a tricorder. I don't know. You mm-hmm. can now. Um, but I will I will get as much information as I can out of that and then um, try and reassure him as best I can that I will do everything I can to make sure that that uh, whatever has happened will affect him as little as possible. So here's the information that you get. The Dabo girl, whose name is Katrina, is a human. Uh, You also get at the Fortune's Den is where she works. You get that information. Um, The gentlemen who came and assaulted him were all wearing masks and all wearing just very black, just like form-fitting outfits. No defining like features. One was tall. One was seven feet tall. Very stocky, built like a brick house. That was the one that smelled. The other two were of average height, but very strong. Um, just looked like basic humanoids, but they 
They none of them said anything. By the way, the only one who spoke was um, the tall one, the tall one who just spoke in like just very plain voice. Um, uh, he was the only one who gave any sort of information, um, and he's the one who made the threat. Okay, and then the man that came and met him later was also Matt. Um. So with the successes you got earlier, I will let you know the man who came to see him later. Uh, he gets really nervous as he's about to reveal this information to you. It was Administrator Bull. He's one of the heads of the planetary systems uh, complex. He was the one who approached me. The writ, the like the the symbol on there, it was an authentic order, but he was the one who gave it to me, put into the system. He had me meet him for dinner. He handed me the data stick, and he let me know that our mutual friends were the one that passed it on to him. But no one's seen him in a couple days, and I've not been able to get in touch with him. Where was the dinner at? Uh, it was at this small cafe off of uh, Main Street. Bully and Main Street. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pull. Oh, also, off the top of my character's head, do I know any species that smell like onions? Not off the top of your heads, although it does bring in mind uh, several. It could be like a genetic abnormality, or sure. it could just be there are several species out there not known for their hygiene. Yeah, yeah, Klingons. Hey, could be Nausicans. You're in the you're in the hallway. You don't know. <laughs> it's at that point, though, you get the communication that you've only got a few minutes. Okay, so then here's probably what's going to happen. I am going to walk out into the hallway. I'm going to work with the rest of my crew. We are going to track this all down, and we're going to get this cleared up. I don't know that I can keep you from any punishment. You've done something here. That makes you an accomplice, even if you were an unknowing one. But I'm going to do my best to make sure that our family is safe and you are safe. Tears start to well up in his eyes. If anyone tries to push you to give them any information, you they should speak with your lawyer, and that is the only thing you should say. Does that make he sense? Nods. It doesn't matter if they tell you that the president of the Federation is on his way to interrogate you now. You, They need to speak with your lawyer, and you will not speak without him, without me present. Okay? Headphone keeps getting caught in my hand. What does it reach for something? Um, he, he nods. Very quiet. And it's at that point that uh, the door opens. Uh, for those of you out in the hallway, eventually he finds just the right legal clause that outmaneuvers you, although you still managed to stymie a man of his legacy, and you managed to stop him for five minutes. Pretty good. Um, storming inside, uh, again, kind of very melodramatically. Uh, and by the way, uh, Tox, you can see, uh, um, hear friends out in the hallway kind of looking very happy with themselves. I lost um, in the corner one of the aides about that uh, outfit change and shower. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Justice. I was in the middle of speaking with my client. Could you at least knock? I feel like this is a a really bad mark on decorum. I would hope that the the JAG office would send someone who understood how to be at least polite to the accused and their lawyer. In matters of Federation security, I think oh. you'll find the laws of decorum suspended. Really, that's not now, what I remember when I was fighting in the war. Well, then perhaps this will all be familiar to you. It's at that point that looking at one of his aides, perhaps on the uh, the central computer there in, in the middle of the room. I'm afraid that matters here are much graver than fact. Your brother Sam's not only accused of sabotaging planetary systems. But aiding in the theft of trilithium resin, one of the most explosive compounds we know, almost a kiloton of it has gone missing. 
And I'm afraid that it could be used for all manner horrible things. And if we don't find where that re that resin is, and more importantly, if we don't find who stole it, then your brother will be responsible for possibly one of the greatest acts of terrorism in Federation history. Justice, could you explain to me why my brother ha is still wearing the same clothes for a week and is filthy and hasn't been given the basic um, the basic uh, hygiene needs of any prisoner? I'm afraid that as we reviewed his personal property... You could, are received... you telling me that you couldn't find jail clothes? You couldn't have gone down the street and picked up some clothes and brought them here? You left it... my brother in dirty clothes for a week. Your brother has been treated humanely. I think we have a different definition of Maine. Clearly we do. Yeah, I think that mine actually is humane, whereas you have shown that you have no decorum whatsoever and that your aggression is only to propel you forward and upward, not to find the truth. Don't worry. My crew and I will look into this, as is our right, as my brother's uh, rightful attorney and the uh, people I choose to employ to follow up on this and we will get to the bottom of it and we will protect the Federation as we in Starfleet always do. Yeah! <laughs> Roger's just in the, in the hallway just like pumping fists. Yeah! Get him! Get him! <laughs> get him! <laughs> now, uh, my brother has nothing to say with you to you without his lawyer here and i have many many things to get into so if you wouldn't mind um i'd like to get to that very well but just so you know we have on recording now he admitted to a crime and i'm sorry you know, on recording where um before you ask matt i know where you're going with this yes you get your intuition's going to be right Highly, like, illegal. Um, the magistrate looks over at one of his uh, attendants, holds up a pad, and on it you can see that one of the cameras in the room apparently had its audio turned on. And, yeah, even though you are not a lawyer, that flagrantly violates his rights as a Federation citizen. I'm going to, like, calm as can be. I'm going to pull forth the greatest Bolian traits I can. I'm going to step up just in front of him and say you are a disgrace to your core to do something so dishonest and so against the federation this is what erodes the federation not someone that steals trilithium resin and blames it on a poor federation citizen like my brother He just has a face of stone. And with that, he is going, he turns and starts to walk out. But he doesn't look like he's been defeated, but he just looks like he's just incredibly confident. Do we have any way to make them delete that since it's attained illegally? So you would know that because it was obtained illegally, it couldn't be admissible in court. Okay. Um, you know that he did record it. Um, and even if he played it before a jury, it would be thrown out. But you would know that an unscrupulous attorney would try to find ways to make the uh, the facts fit his beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now that he essentially he has he knows that the brother did that, he's no longer going to be looking for the actual culprit. He, you you no roles required. You could tell that now he's going to be using that as his guide, and any evidence that he collects going forward is automatically tainted in his mind. This is so yeah. bad. This is he's gonna pin it on the brother as a patsy and not even care about who actually stole. Well, at least we know about his impeccable record and how he attained it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna start working to get Rosrin all the data they already have because that's something they have to share with us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna start pouring through this crap. Um so just to get certain things out of the way, um, 
uh, talks, you talk to your brother, you get the legal case just planned out. Uh, we're not going to go into detail with that. Um, he gives you no more information. I'll, we're not no, going to no. do Law and Order Bolius? Come on! Bolius, 5.53 p.m. Federation time. Bum, bum. <laughs> so with the information you all have now, because um, after a certain point, your time is up, uh, they take him back to his cell, um, you've been assured that he will be given fresh clothes. Um, uh, like you've used your authority to make sure that no, it's not just they they made a promise, but they're going to act on the promise. Um, uh, what are you all wanting to do next with this investigation? Um, Commander, I'd like to adjourn to the runabout. That seems like an excellent idea. Yeah. So we're, gonna go, we're gonna go back to the runabout where we know we won't be recorded. <laughs> Oh, Dabo girls every time. They're nothing but every trouble. time. <laughs> so I do we have any trouble getting back to the runabout? You do not. Okay. Um, There's a giant boot on it to keep us from leaving the planet, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Star Trek, it's a space boot. <laughs> um once we're back, I will lay out what I found out that he was approached or he started seeing this human. Uh, named Katrina, Dobble Girl at the Fortune's Den. Fortune's Den. Uh, that led to him being um, accosted by several men. Um, only one of them spoke. He was like seven foot tall, and he smelled like onions. Um, and then they told him that someone would contact him with the proper information. That person that contacted them was an administrator, Bowl. They met for dinner at a cafe off of main street. I will give the, like the information for the cafe so we can verify okay. that. Mm -hmm. And the data stick was given to him. And that data stick is what actually caused the issue. Mm -hmm. So while technically he is illegal, he is, he is um, guilty of a being an accomplice. And a, an administrator told him to do this and it had the administrative seal. So there's something going on, something larger going on. I'm more concerned that our, you know, expert Starfleet judge, ad, you know, blah, 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 is more concerned for busting your brother when it's so obvious that there's more out there. I think that the judge, the judge advocate is um, more interested in derailing what the Federation's about. Hmm. He's interested in his record. He's it's also he's interested in resolving this as quickly as possible because it's so such a it's got so many eyes on it. But yeah. quick isn't always the way to go, especially when you know there's got to be more people involved than the one you have. I, I do feel and you, like I'm a little out of my depth here. Um, these aren't machines, and I don't see any plasma relays. So, Rosrin, Commander. Anything that I'm missing or you can suggest, I would really appreciate. Well, any information that we can acquire is going to be good. As far as I see it, we have a few avenues of inquiry that we can look at. One being this Dabo girl, Katrina. Try and track her down and see if she's around, still alive. I mean, if she was involved in this, it wouldn't be unheard of that somebody might try to uh, get rid of her. So we should definitely get somebody to go over to this Fortune Palace Davo place and inquire about that. Um, perhaps somebody should also look into this administrator bowl. You said your brother said he hadn't been seen for a couple days. Yeah. That might be a track, and there's definitely a reason behind that. So that's another uh, level of inquiry as well. Um, and third... Uh, perhaps going to this cafe where the meeting took place and see if anyone saw anything are all things that could potentially lead to more information. Also, did they just threaten your brother or did they threaten more people? They threatened my brother, his family, me. Is there anyone we need to get into protection? I don't know that there's anyone here that can protect them. If an administrator was a part of this... I don't know who we can trust. Well, our ship. <laughs> I can call mom. 
we could i mean the start galactic the start. terrorism i'm gonna call my mom <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, 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 the starfleet consulate here on bolus should be able to be fairly secure from any bullions that are involved in this i guess we could rely on starfleet security mm-hmm. which is different than the judge 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 what's his name judge advocate general the jag justice yeah. for lauren or as as uh the chat has suggested the jag off the jag off yeah <laughs> that was not intended who knows <laughs> <laughs> well done <laughs> I also think that maybe we should feel out the uh, the member of the Bolian security that was there, whose name I did not write down. The Colonel? Matt's, yeah. You should also, in terms of actually building the legal case, consult with the lawyer who they were going to assign to him. Yes, I agree. Mm. Uh, the uh, the Bolian was Colonel Bentir Khan. Mm. Hey, sounds like we have, sounds like we have a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it in. Mm-hmm. But before we get to doing all that, it sounds like a good time to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it sounds like we've got quite the mystery going on. Uh, it's been going really well so far. Um, I love the fact that you were all just you come up with this brilliant legal move that bought you five minutes. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, one but... of the best roles we've seen so far. Yeah. I was lucky on that. All right, but, but before we go on our break, um, I would like to remind you all to follow us on Twitch and also to follow Rook and Rasp everywhere on the internet. Feel free to click that subscribe button. And remember, you get a free subscription through your Amazon Prime account. We just love it when people like to watch all of our shows, including other Rook and Rasp shows, which you can check out on our Twitch channel. And, uh, yeah, we also appreciate everybody in the chat and everybody who wants to use their Cthulhu's. Spend them wisely. Cthulhu only gives us one life. But, uh, <laughs> thank you all for watching us, and we'll be back very shortly. All right.
Hello, thank you for joining us again. Um, we are back with our adventure, uh, finding out what's going on with Tox and his family. Uh, but before I go into explaining what happened just before the break, here's some upcoming shows for Rick and Rats I think you guys would just really love. They've been really good all season long. Um, on the 1st, we've got the 7C game, Leaps and Bounties, uh, at 8 o'clock, um, at 5 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, on Sunday, the 6th, we've got the Illuminated Page special one-off game, starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, on Monday, we've got another Voyages of episode, and it's run by, well, just, you're not going to like this guy. It's me! I'm running the <laughs> other one. Um, and so that's going to be Cool as Ice, running on next Monday. And then uh, on Saturday the 5th, in our Seriously Let's Play series, we've got Battletech, starting at 2 o'clock. That's actually the 12th. I, that was my mistake. You know what? At least you're here to correct me. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I read from a script. Yep. I have an iPad. Um, no, so yeah, so uh, if you're just now joining us, um, uh, Lieutenant Commander Tox, brother, has been accused of essentially Federation treason. Um, it looks like he has been accused of sabotaging the, uh, the environmental control sensors on the planet, and um, as they've discovered through their investigations, is actually being accused of much graver crime, including what appears to be the theft of over a kiloton of trilithium resin, which is an incredibly explosive uh, substance in the Star Trek universe. Um, you, they have also been dealing with their current nemesis, who is just uh, Justice Serto Valoran, who is the magistrate appointed to this case. Um, and now they are uh, trying to track down several leads. So, uh, would you guys like to remind me uh, what you would like to do next? I guess... Well, we hadn't decided who was going to do what or if we were going to try to do it all together or what the priority would be. I, I'm afraid we've got too many tasks to do everything together. Yeah, it kind of feels like a divide and conquer situation, unfortunately. Um, I don't... I, I know that... Chasing down Katrina and the administrator are the two big ones because they're going to lead us back to the other people. Mm -hmm. Also, trying oh. trying to get the the data stick that was given and the orders if they were physical. Yeah, and I need to get my parents. I'd like to call my mom first. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to call mom. Mom. <laughs> Moment her cell phone rings, she just thumbs like, no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> Putting everybody safe is a really good first priority. Fun fact, uh, bullions are polyamorous. It's candy. All your moms. They, they've all hung up on all you. All of my... Dang it! <laughs> Jeez! Uh, no, so you, you've, you're, you're placing um, essentially a call to your mother. Um, uh, she picks up right away. Uh, talks oh it's so good to hear from you uh mom i'm uh i don't know if you had heard that i was coming but i'm on planet um i've spoken with vin um and we're gonna get down to the bottom of this and get him uh the best representation possible um he needs a really good attorney the best lawyer that i mean we've been looking at our accounts and we're, we're gonna see if we can just hire just like a just the most well, amazing attorney the planet has to offer. So here's the thing, Mom. Uh, he appointed me. But the good news is uh, I have my commander with me. Um, uh, the first officer of my ship. And she's going to take great care of the situation. And knows far more about protocol and diplomacy and all those things that we would need in the courtroom. Um, and I've also got my uh, chief of security. And he is... Um, uh, Mom, you probably don't know all these Earth idioms. I'm sorry, but he's like, uh, like a like a dog. Once it's got his jaws locked in there, it's not going to let go. So he's going to tear into this and make sure that we get everything we can. And I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put Vin's life in anybody else's hands. I trust them implicitly. I don't understand why the Federation sent an attorney here, um, We're Commander to... Michael Jacobson. We're going to speak with the commander and work with him, but I think Vin is concerned because there seems to be a larger conspiracy going on, which is why I'm calling, actually. Vin made it very clear that he was threatened 
and that you and the rest of the family were threatened. Over what? Is it because he said he was going to plead guilty? No, it was to get him to do what he did. I would like to have Starfleet Security come and take you over to the the consulate for a little while just to make sure that you guys are safe while we're looking into this. I'm sorry, I'm really confused. I this Michael Jacobson arrived and he told us that the that Ven had was going to plead guilty and this was over several hours ago and he told us that the case was very solid and that they would do their best for a light sentence and we were going to hire the attorney to try to ensure that he got sent to a rehabilitation colony and not a penal colony. What what are you talking about? Mom, do you trust me? I do. So we're going to send some some uh, security from Starfleet over to see you and have you probably go back with them to the consulate. Mm -hmm. At this point, that Commander Jacobson? Jacobson? Michael Jacobson. Uh, Commander Jacobson is not the actual deterring. Uh, Purpolean law that I don't understand. I am I, I am officially the attorney. I'm going to consult with him. But officially, I am the attorney for Vin. So whatever Michael told you, or the commander told you, I, I don't doubt that his intentions were pure and clear. But I believe there's much more going on than just Vin pleading guilty. At this point, Vin is being accused of some pretty heinous things. Things far above and beyond what he had any knowledge of. Very well, I trust you. Okay. Um, so when security shows up, uh, just uh, if they if they say they want to stay there, that's fine. If they feel like they can secure the, the house, if not, um, go with them. Any of the family members that you can think of that would want to, that would need to go, please, all of them. I would make I would it would make me feel better. I knew that when I stirred up a hornet's nest, none of you would get stomped. Again, Earth idioms. I'm sorry. Starfleet or Academy really had a, an impact on me. I'm sorry. You need to spend more time at home. I do. I do. So, uh, I love you, mom, and I will, you know, give my love to my moms and dads, all of them, and uh, let them let them know that uh, I'll get this taken care of. I love you too. Um, yeah. Hey Matt, when you're in the call, I want you to roll uh, your insight plus uh, let's call it command. Am I reading her? Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a momentum to okay. get an extra dice. Uh, that would be three successes. What was the difficulty? <laughs> uh, just one. Uh, it's a very, well, very simple thing. That, um, so as you replay the conversation in your mind before you go back to talk to everyone else, you're starting to just play out the timeline of events. Michael Jacobson showed up at your mother's house two hours ago to say that your brother was going to plead guilty, but your brother didn't tell anybody except for you that he was going to plead guilty. Yeah, that seemed a little gross. All right. What are your next steps? Uh, I'm going to make sure that Halata makes the call for security to go over and do the thing. Yeah, I'll take care of that. Absolutely. Uh, Starfleet security is dispatched. Mm. Where would uh, Rajwin be best fit? Going through evidence and getting them to give you more of it because they're hiding crap from us. Honestly, at this point, I think tracking down either Bull or Katrina are going to be the two. Like, I think tracking down Bull is going to be more, um, like, investigative, and I think Roswin would do well there. That sounds good, too. Absolutely. Because it doesn't matter what evidence there is. If we can show that he was coerced and that there were other people involved then he becomes one part of a larger conspiracy and it takes a mm -hmm. lot of pressure off of him. Mm -hmm. That's, agree. Agree. that's one of the reasons I'm concerned is if they have that data stick and they aren't sharing that, that 
should be traceable back. Considering there is a bullying and administrator involved with this, I don't think there is going to be a data stick, but we can look for it, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, why don't we have... I'm, I'm sorry. Commander, do you mind? I do not mind. This is your brother. We will back you where we can. Rosrin, uh, why don't you and the doctor try and track down Bull? Um, verify that he was at the cafe with my brother, and that they had dinner together, because that, that corroborates his story that we already know was recorded. And then, uh, Commander, why don't you and I try and track down Katrina? Sounds like a plan. All right, so who would like to go first, essentially? Other than just, would you like to just try to, to use Starfleet to try to figure out where the administrator might have been, or? <clears throat> well, we can start by, because they said they hadn't been heard from, that he hadn't been heard from in a couple days. So um, I think, uh, doctor, do you think maybe we should contact his office and see what they say? Contact Call his them office. and yeah, contact his office. And if they don't have any information, I say we contact his family if he has any. Yeah, we can contact his office, try to contact his family if we can track it down, and we can go over to the cafe and see if anyone there saw them um, together. This is great. So if you want to call his office and his family, I will head over to the cafe. How does that sound? Uh, sure. Uh, do you want, do you want to split up or do you want some backup when you go to the cafe? I mean, we may run into some of the perpetrators in this. I mean, it's up to you. I'm, I'm good. Well, I think, uh, not drawing as much attention would probably be the benefit there. Um, you can meet me there when you're finished your phone calls. Understood. All right. So, um, how would you like to proceed, essentially? So, I, I guess, I mean, unless you want to do the cafe first, I'll, I'll start calling, yeah. uh, get on the comms and contact his office and see mm -hmm. where he is. Uh, okay. Give, you know, rank, name, maybe make up some dubious medical excuse while I'm trying to contact him. Um... It seems to work. Um, they they tell you that he's not been seen uh, for a couple of days. Um, it appears he had to put in um, an emergency uh, case for administrative leave. Um, they do give you the section of the city, though, where his uh, uh, habitation unit is. Okay. And I, I'm assuming I can use the computer to find out how to contact him mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. And I'll, I'll use the communicator and see if I can contact his residence and see if there's anybody there to answer. Nobody responds. He does not respond on his personal communication communicator frequency and his uh, residence. There's no response. And can I use the computer to see if he has any family here on Bolus? Uh, he has family on Bolus. They are not in this part of the planet. Um, right. When you also try to reach them, um, they just respond with, uh, we haven't spoken to him for several days. Is there something wrong? Uh, and, you, you, you're essentially, it's not that you're getting going in circles, but uh, it seems that just like he is, he's truly essentially gone missing. Yeah. Yeah. He's truly disappeared. Okay. Um, I'm going to hightail it then and see if I can catch up with Lieutenant Rosrin so he has that information because it may be fairly important. Well, I'm, I'm calm. I'll use the, yeah, Star Trek. I'm going to use the calm and contact Lieutenant Rosrin and tell him everything. You know, it's like, he has disappeared. He is nowhere. His family doesn't know where he's at. He's not answering any of his comms. Uh, his office said he took an administrative leave of absence. Huh. I assume everybody, it's probably best to have everybody like talk and a whole lot. I hear this too. Um, and Rosrin's going to say, well, I'm going to head to the cafe. Why don't you head to his habitation? There may be some clues there as to what happened to him. Once I'm done at the cafe, I'll meet you there. Sounds great. And I'll relay all that information to talk yeah, to yeah, a lot of. Yeah. All right. Um, 
So you're trying to, try to find the cafe. Um, yes. Sorry, my audio acted up in my ear. Um, the cafe is nearby. Um, it's in kind of like just like a very middle class part of the city by Federation standards. Um, uh, it's not particularly busy, but you do notice that it has a warning attached to it. And the warning is warning potential inhalation of harmful chemicals. Okay, um, Bajwan's going to, uh, go in, um, it? and, <laughs> uh, gonna go in and try to find a staff member, you know, if there's a desk or a, a, you know, counter or whatever. Um, as you walk up the street to it, uh, the smell hits your nose before you enter. Um, oh, this okay. is the Bolian equivalent of a hookah bar. Um, there are people outside oh, smoking no. hookah, people of all species enjoying a variety of different types of hookah, both like earth, bolian, um, there's even the Klingon version there. Um, Klingon version, particularly harmful to your nose. Uh, uh, just all kinds of smells just are assaulting you right now as you step inside. Okay, uh... Well, let's let's try to solve that a little bit. Rostron Rostron can breathe through his mouth, uh, mm -hmm. so he's going to attempt to to kind of be a little be a mouth breather for a little while. Uh, if he has to, he may try to find like a little piece of fabric or something to you know stick if he has anything. Um, you know, probably not because <laughs> you know they tend to carry a lot with them. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, he'll just be aware and and you know. Um, you know, try to try to not breathe it in as much as possible. So oh, down there. <laughs> so um, you see that behind the, the central part of the bar, which is a person who's taking credit, um, it's just like you know a large, uh, just like heavy set man who looks like his face is just buried inside of a pad, looking incredibly bored. And the moment you step up, he just kind of doesn't even look at you and says, "What flavor do you want?" I'm actually here to ask some questions in regard to an investigation. Into our business license or, or what? And there's some customers that you had here a little while ago. Oh, we don't really keep track of that sort of thing. People pay us and then they go. But sure, go ahead and ask your questions. Have you seen this bullion? And I put up a picture of like Tox's brother. Mm, doesn't it look familiar. Been, and he'd state the date. He was like, it would have been this date. Where we you got a lot of at the time. <laughs> we got a lot of people in here. Um, nah, doesn't really look familiar. Um, I suppose I could try to track down in case if you paid with credits, then I could just track down his data chip. But um, yeah, it doesn't look familiar right now. What's he? Um, what's he wanted for? What about this man? And it'll be the the other dude, like the the ambassador. administrator Volt. Administrator, yeah. Has he been in here? Oh yeah, him. Uh, yeah, he likes to come in and he likes to play games. Um, yeah, so I've seen him. Uh, yeah, uh, usually likes to sit with the back back room crew. Uh, it's just those guys who sit at the back. Uh, just warning though. Um, yeah, you're you're Trill, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on. Reaches on the table, comes back. Look, just you didn't hear it from me. Just take these nose plugs. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> he like puts them in, and then he's gonna head to the back uh, to to see who's back there. So uh, when you go to the back, um, it, it, this place is crowded, and hookahs are replicated at the tables. Uh, people put in their orders, they pay. The it's replicated, and then they start smoking it. Um, towards the back, you hear the sound of clanking dice, and you can see a series of four tables where everybody is smoking pretty heavily, they're playing games, uh, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, clearly everyone here is familiar with each other, except for the, the crew at the table to the right, where there is, um, just, um, a gentleman who's about five feet tall, who's clearly talking with several associates, it looks like they're actually, like, bidding money on the game they're playing. And they're all smoking a lot of hookahs. You've noticed that in the area around that table, there's not that many people sitting or standing. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go over there then. And uh, I'll say, excuse me, I hate to interrupt your 
your game, but I am currently conducting an investigation and I have a couple questions. Yeah. You're conducting an investigation? Sorry, we're, yes. just, we're just here to have fun. I'm not really sure what your investigation's about. It's about some customers that would have been here on such a such a date. Are you here often? I'm here sometimes. Do you recognize this bullion? You show him uh, Ben? Yeah. Kind of just looks away like, nah, it doesn't look familiar. There's a lot of bullions here. And all the table laughs. What about Administrator Vol? Has he been in recently? Uh, he looks at it a little more carefully. He's like, yeah, I might have seen him once or twice. I mean, he would have been with that other Volian. Do you know him to have conducted meetings here? A lot of people come here. I, you know, they come here, they have a smoke, you know, some of them can't handle all the flavors that's offered here, and they go home. But it's harmless. And then even if people get sick, they get cured. You know, I mean, you Starfleet, you've got the best doctors in the quadrant, don't you? Correct. Um, can I do a read on him just to yes, see can. if he's telling me the truth? Uh, go ahead and roll your insight plus um, either your hmm, probably security. Uh, I will take one success. So you're not able to get a whole lot of information out of him. What you can tell, so he's being a dick. That much mm -hmm. is clear. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't need your, your highly trained instincts to figure that out. Yes. <laughs> but what you can tell, though, is just the fact that he is not just being rude to you. It seems like he's being rude to you to deflect attention away. You can tell that he is, he is trying to answer you with a just, with you know, like smart aleck retorts. But you, you're, you're definitely telling that there's something here. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, so Rajan will start. He'll continue to engage him with questions, um, but he's not really paying attention to the answers at this point. He's trying to gauge what's going on around him that this guy might want to be deflecting from or, you know, see how others are reacting to this sort of thing. Okay. So the whole time he's going to be like, you know, does he come here? Does he come here often? Are you sure you haven't seen him? You know, what you know, what type of hookah is available here? You know, that sort of thing. Just anything in name, not really paying attention to the answers so he can divert his attention to what's going on around and well, see if he catches anything. He is continuing to try to deflect and uh, he's making a few jokes at your expense. Uh, Mainly calling uh, what you're wearing to be pajamas, you know, being generally rude. So, mm -hmm. but but you, as you're sitting there and getting the lay of the land, um, your feet kind of vibrate a bit, and uh, you just see a lot of people in like around, behind you just part ways as this really tall character to step forward. Um, it looks to be like just a, like seven feet tall, uh, very gray skin, not quite like rock, but very solid. And you just, the faintest hint of tusks uh, coming out from his lip, but dressed very smartly. And as he's walking up, he is looking through you and to the figure at the table. And then just kind of like just shoving you out of the way slightly. It's like, ah, hey, how are you doing, Vlart? Oh, man, that's, I've had a day and I'm here to just smoke and relax and maybe win back the money you owe me. Hmm. And uh, the the man who's been giving you the 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 annoying answers uh, just kind of grins, gives just stands up, hugs the gentleman, and then sits back down. And uh, the large gentleman taps a few buttons on the table, and a particularly noxious piece of equipment shows up. There are hookahs, and then there are hookahs that just look like they are just like every nightmare you've had about a hookah. Uh, this tall black and red cylinder thing appears, and the moment <laughs> that he starts to smoke it. Two of the gentlemen at the table just kind of politely pay and leave. And you see other people just start to be like, oh, not this. Uh, but with the nose pugs, you're not really getting any smell. Oh. Well, they're trying to roust me out. This is not going to work. So <laughs> Roger is going to be like, oh, uh, maybe you know something about what I... He's, he's basically, he has ignored all the insults and everything like that. He's just kind of going for... 
like sincere question and everything like that and trying to from from the annoying guy and mm-hmm. when this big guy shows up and Rajman's only like five, he's not very big so it's kind of like the seven foot guy he's like oh well you seem like you uh frequent this place a lot perhaps you know and he's going to start asking him the same questions he was asking the annoying guy and see how he reacts to it like, you know, have you seen this bullion? Have you seen Administrator Bull here? You know, were you here on such a such a date? You know, that sort of stuff. So as you speak to him, he just holds up a large callous hand, almost like holding a finger, like he's going to talk to you. Then as he talks to the guy, he inhales deeply, and then he just turns and he blows a fog of the of the smoke right at you, all over you. Sorry, didn't see you there. Did you need something? So rude. All right. I think it's time for some uh, intimidation here, perhaps, if I can. Um, intim- you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, presence, maybe? I don't know, or control oh, or yeah. something like that. He- Rajan's going to basically be like, okay, like, you had your chance to tell me willingly what I want to know, and now we're going to get serious. So, um it is definitely your presence. And then um, depending on how you're trying to emote this, it could be command or security plus he, anything else. He's basically going to say, I'm conducting an official Starfleet investigation. And if you don't cooperate, that could go very badly for you. All right. Make your role. He, this is actually going to be opposed on his part because he is. Oh, go ahead. Can I take momentum, please? Oh, please do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How much do we have? We're capped. Six, yeah. Okay. Your space momentum is tapped. Uh, two. Two successes. Oh, he only got one. Uh, yeah, so as you look him in the eyes, you see that he, he doesn't try to show it physically, but his eyes flint. Um, And then Roger will lean in close and he'll say, and let me tell you something, I have a very good memory for faces, so we will find you and your friend here. Now, would you like to actually answer some questions? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen I've seen your friend. The administrator came here, gambles a lot, not very good at it. Spent a lot of money. Oh. Go ahead. A lot of money. You said I'm going to let him get whatever information. So he's in here a lot, spends a lot of money. Um, Yeah. We float him credits when we can, but to be honest, we're not going to pay him just so that he could be here and lose the money back to us. Told him he had to bring the credits. Otherwise, we weren't going to let him play here anymore. Now, Mm -hmm. he's disappeared, so I assume he's probably taken like, you know, a vacation off world or something but uh yeah but i haven't seen him in a while that's all the information we have but if you find him kind of owes me some money so just tell him to get in touch absolutely i will tell him that you're looking for him Thank you for your cooperation. I'm sure starfleet appreciates it as well and he's just gonna turn on his heel and like march out so your universal translator catches him as he says something to the to the Bolians in their native tongue. Very rude expletives involving you and your parents. Um, <laughs> which, which the tables just start to laugh. Yeah. Um, as you're about to leave, uh, the guy behind the counter goes, uh, hey, the, the nose plugs. Oh, yeah. we, wa- we wash them. Don't worry. Just Yeah, here. <laughs> and husband will get out of there so his nose is not assaulted anymore so he takes the plugs and he puts them in kind of a little like you know sonic sanitizer <laughs> as you step outside um you just you've got a scent to you it wasn't there before and it wasn't like the smells you got just as you were walking the building it's just really weird like you think you've seen like the, the smell comes from like a lot of human cooking you've had before but you can't quite place it Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait a right. minute. Okay, wait. This guy was like seven feet tall, right? He was. And you smell like Is onions, onions? now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
God damn it. <laughs> Those were the droids you were looking for. Crap. <laughs> I'm going to come back for that. <laughs> because he's not going to go in there and try to take this guy in by himself. But he is Good going to, as he's call. walking away, he is going to touch his comm and say, I think I just met one of the people who um, beat up your brother talks. Where is he? He's at the this hookah place. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, Rosrin will tell him he's a big whatever species he is. So I, I did not uh, try to apprehend him myself. Um, if you look it up in the database for talking to him, you find out that he is a mulg, which is uh, a species that's on kind of like the the most western side of the uh, the Federation. A mulg? A mulg. It's not often that someone tells me, or that uh, quotes Star Trek that I don't know. <laughs> What's someone, O-L-G? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They popped up in uh, just a book that I had read years ago, and it was like, well, I want to use this guy. Um, space hookahs show up a lot, though, in Star Trek. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you don't really know that much about them. They, uh, they're they barely in the Federation, to be honest, but uh, they've been trying to just rapidly advance themselves, but nothing really stands out as you look up to the PCs. They're not uncommon, but it's just one of those things where they've not like really distinguished themselves in Federation history. They served at the front lines of the Dominion War, but uh, apart from that, you know, nothing really stands out. All right. Yeah, and and with that, and because Ross would definitely be like, maybe we can wait for him to come out or something like that, and get him then because. Probably not in there would be a good place to try to apprehend him. So he's going to head to um, the administrator's place to meet up with uh, Dr. Haskins. All right. So who all is going to the administrator's place? Well, I think Tox and uh, Commander Halata were going to look into Katrina. So, and then, so it's just going to be us two there for now, but they know where we are. Okay, then we're going to go over to uh, Tox and the Commander. So, um, did you just do a basic search into uh, just uh, Katrina's background bio? Yeah. That seems like a good place to start, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you find that she does have a residence nearby. But you find that the residence is also in the same building uh, that she apparently operated out of. Uh, it would appear that she rents one of the rooms upstairs. Um, the air, the neighborhood is kind of what you would consider to be very. It's it's not very well off. Uh, Bolius is a member of the Federation, but they still they heavily use the credit, and so there are people here who they do live off of, like you know the the Federation bounty. But this is a neighborhood for people who just barely survive off of that. Um, uh, and even as you go here, uh, it's not crowded at all tonight. Um, or it's not tonight. No, it is tonight. I've decided. I got confused <laughs> on what, what, what it was. And so I think enough time has passed. You guys, it's now approaching evening. Um, uh, streets aren't very crowded. Um, neon signs everywhere. And, uh, it looks like the cafe's about to close. Um, since we were coming, could I have... Like, could we have acquired credits or latinum of some some sort of currency? Mm -hmm. So, like, enough that it looks like we're going to maybe high roll for at least a minute? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are, um, has established Deep Space Nine, there are ATMs in the Federation. So, as we kind of walk uh, in, I will, in my most jovial, bullying way, kind of, like, slap Halata on the shoulder like like we're about to have a good time and say, look, Dabo, this is the place we want to be. Come on. Right. It's not like DS9. It'll be better. And I'm going to go <laughs> right in. Clark's um, not dive. Who got a Clark? <laughs> uh, the, the, the pit manager there uh, sees you coming and just is immediately like, all right, Federation spending money. All right. Um, <laughs> Gives you a seat. Uh, there's about four Dabo girls working. They're just exchanging shifts. Um, one of them, though, matches the description you've been given. It is of a woman about five foot nine, um, just 
bright red hair. Um, they're all dressed in like, you know, kind of revealing outfits, but nothing quite to the level of Quark's. Um, all these Tabo girls are professionals. Uh, they definitely know how to like r- rope people into the game. Um, how do you want to proceed? I'm going to hand him whatever, a little bit of whatever credits we have and say, it'd be really nice if she were our Davo girl. He looks at you with a suspicious eye, like, like just for your table or for later? For, for, for the, whoa, for the table. Oh, okay, good. Cause yeah, we don't do that thing here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, of course not. No, 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 no. Um, that, that, more credits. <laughs> He he Who talks. Knew the to... Federation were like that. The guys thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Uh. He talks to Davo girls, and the the one that's managing the table looks like just flustered because his issue. Because they make their money off of the tips from the table, but he backs off, and Katrina steps up. Uh, it's you and about two other people at this table. Um. I'll let it spin a couple of times and just play the the wheel. Um. And play it. I've played Dabo enough uh, that I would play it like conservatively, but make it look like I'm being aggressive. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make sure the credits last while it looks like I'm spending money. You are about eighty credits up. Sure, sure. And then I'll I'll look at her and say, you know, a friend of mine was telling me I think about a girl that looked like you that was running Dabo here. She goes. Oh, sure. Who is he? Did he say that you would get like some kind of a uh, special deal at the bar? No, he told me that your friends would take me out in the back and uh, rough me up to make sure that I got arrested for treason. The, d- the dice go flying across the table from her on accident. <laughs> and then the other people at the table turn and look at you, but they're very confused. I think you know and... my brother Vin, don't you, Katrina? Um... She is frozen with fear. Like, your brothers, Vin? Yeah, and I believe that you're under arrest for questioning in, in uh, regards to said treason. Please come with us. Well, if I'm under arrest, I guess I'm under arrest. Guess you have to take me away. Yep. She said I'm going to gra- read the room. Wrongly. That sounds like a bad idea. I'm reading the room. Uh huh. <laughs> Somebody is about to come interfere. <laughs> um. Uh, roll your insight plus security. Uh, sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a, a dice with momentum. What's my difficulty here? Uh, the difficulty here is going to be two. Sure, sure, makes sense. Um. Yeah, no, that's gonna apply. Oh, but that's okay, because I'll take a crit and a success, so three. Of course you're critting. Um, so yeah, she said that rather loudly. Um, the pit boss, kind of this guy, you know, he looks not upset, but anxious, as if he didn't expect this to happen. But you're also noticing that there's been a gentleman towards the back who looks like he was just kind of like reading whatever the bullion equivalent of a newspaper was, who the newspaper has dipped. He is staring at the table. It's a space newspaper. Space paper. <laughs> yeah, space newspaper. <laughs> um, does he is he a bullion? Uh, he is a bullion. Uh, so I will go around the table to her. Uh, I assume we brought hand phasers because they're standard things, and we're going into a potentially dangerous situation. Is that fair? Uh, you know, I will allow it. Uh, normally on bullious they. Federation world, they don't normally carry around phasers, but because you are doing an investigation and because you know your brother had been threatened, not unreasonable for you two to show up armed. Um, and I'm very I, much doing the watching his back thing. I will turn my back to the guy with the newspaper and I will say very quietly to her, if you point him out, we take him in too, and I make sure that he doesn't find out that you pointed him out. Just nods. Staring at him, just nods. Commander, could you take the gentleman with the newspaper as well? The space paper as well? Absolutely. The guy on the back wall lowers the paper, and he is wearing like a like a very like you know like um a leather jacket, but also a business suit underneath it. Um, and he the paper just kind of lowers, and he looks tense, like he is just ready for a fight. 
I will pat my phaser and look him in the eye and say, you don't want to do that. I don't remember what my setting is. Kind of his head cocks. Just, you see a smile, a very cold smile coming from See you, uh, Federation types. You don't mess around. Not when my family's on the line. Come with us. He looks between the two of you, looks at your phasers, smirks, and kind of just like, all right, go. Are you doing anything with them right now before you start to take them away? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm going to pat him down because that seems like a dumb idea. I assume the Dabo good girl is wearing clothes that would make it very difficult for her to hide a weapon. Maybe, but you can still search her. I'll let the, the commander search her, <laughs> and I will search the gentleman. That seems the appropriate way to do that. Uh, so you find on her person, uh, she has what's essentially, it's like a small mini taser that she okay. keeps hidden on her back uh, in one of her pockets. Um, on him, you find a uh, Type 2 disruptor. Oh my Those, Are those legal within the Federation? They are not. No. Mm. Oh, I'll, excellent. I'll, I'll pull it and go, mm. see, it was a hunch. And now... Naughty, naughty. Yeah, now, it's, now it's a crime. So yeah, I got a permit for that. Yeah, yeah, so does your mom. Let's go. <laughs> Telling you, Spark Fleet Academy really rubbed off on Tox really badly. <laughs> <laughs> I am hoping that we brought restraints with us. <laughs> we have space zip dies, don't worry. <laughs> 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 Boyens is like my mom has a permit. What? I, ass <laughs> uh, I assume we like when we get to the street, we can just beam straight back to the runabout, right? Are you going to try to contact your runabout's transporter? Yeah. Uh, you can't get in touch with it, but that wouldn't be too uncommon because you're like you know it's it is it's good for moving around the planet, but there's yeah. a lot of things that, um, like the the power grid interferes with it. But there are street transporters. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm actually on the way to the street tra transporter. I assume, hmm, I assume we were given calm frequencies for uh, the colonel and the uh, and Commander Jacobson. Mm -hmm. I will tap and uh, call for uh, Ventir Khan. Uh, does not respond. Okay, and then course. I will tap for Commander Seems Jacobson. Useful. Commander Jacobson picks up. Uh, Commander Jacobson. Uh, Commander, this is uh, Commander uh, Garhar. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken a couple of people into custody. Um, I'd like you to join us to talk with them. Would you mind? Of course. Um, uh, meet us at the runabout? Where are you right now? Oh, we're... So we'll meet you at the runabout. Uh, you're you're cutting out right there. I I don't think I heard you. Uh, that that will at the runabout. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying at the runabout. That's all I'm hearing. Good at the runabout, and then I will click off. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and then we will next? head right over to like the trust the, nobody trust like nobody. the transporter pad and we will transport to the runabout especially okay. don't trust that guy because he's been yeah. lying to people as yeah. you start the transport we're going to move over to the other two Whew. oh also uh, more threat was bought by chat so thank we're you. I'm aware thank you some... chat <laughs> thank you chat <laughs> tons of threat we still got to arrest a seven foot tall onion smoking <laughs> what, we we took in two people. Come on, <laughs> you're a Klingon. You got this. Just I mean, if we spray him. on that guy, Roger would have been thrown through the window, probably. <laughs> I just want to watch Keed hypo spray him and then like chuck the seven foot tall guy over his shoulder. <laughs> I would try it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm posted up against the wall, just kind of leaning there, waiting for Rosrin to get there and when he walks up I'm going to be like why do you smell <laughs> it lingers 
Yes. It, it's a so is it just like dun dun ambassador rules, please. <laughs> 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 um, uh, it's 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 a long story. I had to go into this hookah bar. I mean, it wasn't actually a cafe. Apparently, cafes in on Bolius are actually hookah bars. Apparently, interesting. Yeah, um, really, really assaulting to the senses. Incredibly assaulting to the senses. I can imagine. Yeah, but I ran into uh, I think who was one of our perpetrators, seven foot tall. Are you familiar with mugs? I passingly. I mean, it's I studied their biology a little bit during the war just in case we had to you know take care of any casualties but well this one said some very disparaging things about my family oh. and yeah and but i did was able to manage to get out of him that uh, apparently uh, administrator vol is heavily heavily in debt well but really then that would explain why he's doing this possibly I'd imagine some of that material would go for quite a high price on the black market. Yeah. Well, no, uh, either that, yeah, or the true way wants it. Right. Exactly. All right. So the last thing we need is Goltel Kenny having all this freaking explosive. (laughs) Which, I mean, tracks with what he would want. He'd want that super weapon to hold over the entire quadrant's head. Absolutely. I don't like that guy. I oh, know. We should have shot him when we fought saw him the first That's time. That's what I said. That is what I said. And nobody listened to me. That is what I said. Never mind. I, I, Never mind. I am okay. the, the firm believer in that now. Trust me. <laughs> um, so he, he, no one's here and I'm not able to hack into his door entry to get the door to open. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll know some security bypasses to try and get up that door open yeah well with you here we should be able to look for any biological evidence if he was uh taken or hurt or anything like that if we can get inside so um yeah we're gonna try to break into this place like, actually i'm gonna try the door first see if it's open i'm not gonna be that ridiculous we'll just you know knock on the door uh, see if it's it open not, it does not open okay well at this point we will try to get into the door <laughs> okay how do you want to do it um codes probably try to look at the the comp- i mean he knows security stuff so you know he's probably studied what type of like security locks various doors might have hopefully it's something he might be at least a little familiar with okay then use either your control your insight and your sec- uh, security difficulty is going to be pretty high on this one though it's going to be a three all right, control insight. We still have okay. five. They're momentum. both the same. They're both the same. Uh, do we have momentum? Yep. Bend. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I'll take one. Should I take? I can use two, right? If I could, is that okay? Yeah, you that would have been to... three momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have it to spend. Go for it. Yeah, definitely. All right. So that means I roll four. Let's see. I'm trying to roll under fourteen here. So let's see what I got. Oh no. Okay. We have a reroll. All right. Okay, then I will reroll because I rolled a two and a four, which are both under my security at and under. So that's four successes right Right. there. I rolled two or four. However, I rolled a 20 on the third one. Reroll. (laughs) Reroll. Are you sure? I mean, come on. Uh, You know, as much as I would like somebody (laughs) to come and try to shoot us, I don't, I don't, would, would not like that to happen. I will take a 17. So that's four successes. Uh, You uh, know how to bypass the lock on here, um, which isn't too difficult. Um, You're not, you're not going to set off any alarms. Um, You, it's going to leave an imprint that you were in here, Um, but you get in. Um, The door opens. Um, You can hear the sound of music playing. Uh, You, it'd be the equivalent of just kind of like very loud jazz. I look over at <laughs> Dr. Haskins. Um, can you see if there's any bio signs in here? So we, we hear Doctor? music, right? 
Do you, yeah. Okay. I'll start. Yeah. Um, tricorder's out. I'm kind of. If there's life signs peeking around, like, peeking around the door frame, <laughs> trying to get a scan of the room. Uh, for that, uh, roll your insight plus. Hmm. Take just your insight for now. Just straight insight. What else? Security would work. Security would work. All right, so being sneaky, sneaky. That is amazing. I had to roll under a nine. I got a three and a four, so two successes. Two nice. successes. Yeah. Uh, that was what you needed. Um, right now, it's hard for you to pick up anything with your tricorder. Uh, the tricorder, you know, the, the range isn't like super far. Right. But in the immediate room that you're in, which is a very wide, um, very, it's a circular room, lots of like just like expensive things on the walls. Um, uh, you're not detecting anything so far. Um, the one thing that does stand out from you looking around the room is that there appears to be a drink sitting on a nearby table next to a chair. I think he's in here. Yeah, definitely. Can I um? Can I pull out a phaser? If, if you guys would be armed. Yeah. Uh, Rajan's gonna pull out his phaser. Okay. And he's- I'll pull mine out too, just to give back up. And I say, Administrator Vol, please step out. Uh, you nobody steps forward. This is a rather large um um home. Yeah. Okay. Um, not too. It does have two floors, but very wide. Think of like um a, a ranch style house. Okay. So he's he's going to kind of move forward. Uh, shouting the whole time, like, you know, making their presence known to allow him to come out on his own. Um, uh, it's just, the music is really, really loud. Uh, it's just echoing throughout the house. <sighs> can, we, uh, can we see where it's coming from just to turn it off? <laughs> Seems to be coming from the intercom. Um, you may be able to turn it off if you find where, like, the central computer room is in this house. Or, um, also, because it's my courtesy, you could also ask the computer to do it. Uh, computer, uh, turn off music. Uh, the, uh, stops. It's at that point, you hear a banging noise. You hear that? Start looking for it. Yeah, and we're gonna, like, I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> we're gonna... Go towards this banging noise. Somebody wanted to hide what they were doing, and we're gonna catch him. <laughs> uh, yeah. You go to what appears to be the the uh, the inner room of this of the house, um, and you, the door is shut and locked, and you're hearing somebody throwing themselves up against the door. Hmm. All right. Oh. Administrator Vol, is that you? You think you hear a muffling noise on the other side. All right, step back from the door. We're going to come in. We're going to get it open. The battering sound stops. All right. Get clear. All right. And it's just, uh, let's, let's try to shoot the door. Uh, just phase it. Phase it, yeah. The control. Uh, you shoot the door. Uh, the door melts away from the phaser beam. And then on the other side, tied up and gagged, is a bullion who looks like he's been beaten rather brutal. Uh, blood is coming from multiple cuts along his body. Um, just several lacerations all along his arms, his head, his clothes are torn. Uh, it looks like he's been tortured pretty extensively. Yeah, Roshan Pudley doesn't even need to look at Dr. Haskin, so no, he's just gonna... Straight in there. Yeah, yeah, he's just gonna start looking... Roshan's gonna start looking around the room and while Haskins goes to work. Chat wants and, to know if it's Minkler. <laughs> <laughs> I want, God darn it, Minkler. Minkler! <laughs> uh, yeah, and Roswin will calm too and let Tox and the commander know uh, what's going on as well. I'm going to... You said he was tied up, like, not to a chair or anything. He was like, arms were bound behind him, and that's why he was throwing himself against the door. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna cut loose the bonds, start doing first aid, triage, seeing if you know he needs to be stabilized or not, and we'll get ready the, to start moving him. The moment that you cut the bonds free, he acts with fear as he looks at you, 
and he tries to crawl backwards. Calm down. I'm Lieutenant Commander Haskins. I'm Federation Medical Officer. We're here to help you. Yeah, and the other guy is like a commander. Why should I trust you? What other guy? It's at that point you hear from behind you. Oh, no. That, w- that would be me. You turn around. Yeah. You see Commander Michael Jacobson standing there holding a phaser, and he has the drop on you. I knew it! God damn! I knew it, knew it, knew it. I'm going to have to ask you to put your phasers down. Well, mine would have already been put up because I was doing... Yeah, he was doing medical stuff. Medical stuff. stuff. Uh, well, is it just him? Uh, it looks like it's just him. All right. Table check. Should Rajwin just, like, try to get at this guy or should he actually put his phaser down? He's going to disappear you. Don't let him disappear you. <laughs> <laughs> I think on, I, I, I think this, this is the time. instance that you you wharf this up and just tackle him. Can't shoot you with a phaser if he drops it. <laughs> I'm clean. I'm ready to to charge his charge him. So I wait. I'm kind of I'm watching you to see what your lead is going to be. Because I really feel like Rosman would go after him, but I want to do a table chat to see if that would be a really. I mean, are you really a security officer if you don't have a phaser burn? Yeah. (laughs) All right, we're doing it. We're doing it. Roswell will just glance at at Haskins like, get Klingon on me right now. We're going to take this guy. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Good thing I have queued up combat rules. (laughs) All right. Uh, because he does have his phaser ready, but you two are just going to make the run at him. He is going to try to make one attack at, uh, it's going to be at whoever is charging towards him closest. So, of the two of you, which do you think would be the closest to him? Uh. How big of the, that room, that was a closet, is it basically a closet or just a small room that the the bullion was in? Uh, it's a bedroom. A bedroom? Yeah, uh, well, about... had been, like, walking around, like, trying to see if there was, you know, something in the, well, Has- so maybe Haskins? Yeah, I'd probably be the closest. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He's going to take a shot at me. I hope that's on stun. <laughs> probably not. Threat is currently at 13, and momentum <laughs> is currently at 3. <laughs> not like I've been saving this. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, so it ends the medical career of Keith Haskins. <laughs> no! It's okay. Uh, all right. So... This is not an opposed task, because he's shooting at me. So, one phaser shot, and he's Starfleet, and he's pretty well trained. You just know he's got some pretty good skills he's bringing to the table. That is two successes. Okay. All right. Because it has been a minute since I've had to do these rules. Which is exactly the number he needed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any kind of um, traits or anything that will give you resilience or anything that might help with this? Starfleet, uh, Starfleet uniform gives one point of resistance. Yeah, I got the Star, Starfleet uniform. Mm-hmm. Uh, hand-to-hand combat is really the only thing I'm trained in. So yeah, that's a, that's about it. Just Star Trek or Star Trek Starfleet uniform. That's still pretty good. That'll help. Yeah. So that's one d six, right? Yep. And that's a five. So you'll negate one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's still pretty good. Uh, you do get two points of stress from it. Okay. Uh, it's that point that you notice he's not... It's not quite a normal Starfleet phaser, but it's also not like something overpowered. You've not been, you've not been disintegrated. <laughs> um, so two points of stress. It kind of gets you kind of like lower on your midsection, but you power through it. Um, but now you get to react. Because now you're in melee range. So I didn't have time to pull any weapons out, but I will go hand-to-hand try to take him down. I will punch at him, kick him, tackle him, something. Tackle. Go cutting on fighting powers. Yeah. For the Empire! (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, now, this one is opposed. Okay. It's a daring and security. Mm hmm. Okay, so is that what I'm daring and yeah. security? Yeah, daring and security. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's one success. Well, you're over there in one success land. What's it like living in one success land? Me and my 20. Oh! Yeah! And the other one was, a, is the other one was out. <laughs> it's It's so sad we don't get complications. <laughs> if this was a D&D &D game, then you would have been down. But this yeah. is not a D&D &D game. So, <laughs> cool. All right. Um, so, uh, you're hitting him. It's, pretty, it's unarmed. Yeah. Um, just go try to resist it. Um, but uh, depending on what you'd like to do with your melee combat options, you'll get like you know your free choice of you could shove him, um, just you know normal strike, or you could just try to like grapple him because you're so close. Um, he was pretty intent on thinking that no, this phaser will kill you, and clearly that didn't work. So just shooting at Klingons. Uh, I'm gonna go for a grapple. Okay. He. Isn't really all that badly hurt by your blow, but he is bound up in it. Where he had his phaser ready to keep shooting you, but you've got the phaser over his head. I'll just start yelling at Rosrin, shoot him, take him down, shoot him. No sooner said than done, my friend. Just like the raptor <laughs> handler. Shoot her! Shoot her! <laughs> Put her back! It's weird you say that because the raptor's showing up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, uh, well, the other well, two we didn't even know were there. <laughs> it's a space raptor. Space <laughs> raptor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing it with a little calm badge. <laughs> Majestic creature. Clever girl. All right, so um. Is it is it me now or? Oh uh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead and, and shoot. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna take a. Uh, uh. So that's um. It control. Which what's the role? I know it's gonna be security, when, but when you're it... firing, it's control and security, and okay. you have to get you have to hit a two. That's your difficulty, unless there's anything else that would uh, okay. change that. So I would like I have hand phasers as a focus, just so that that's there. So I will get you know, the crit fits under. Can I also use, um, how many determination can you use? You've Just already one. used your determination and unless you activate one of your, uh, values, you won't get it back, but we have four momentum right now. Okay. Um, I do. Okay. So we have four momentum. Um, I do have lives are sacred, which, you know, he's trying to save people from getting hurt. Um, like Fen's mm -hmm. brother and the and the and and you know Haskins and all that. <laughs> uh, would that count? I think that would count. All right, because I used the every being deserves benefit of the doubt before. Oh, and, and then uh, he has, oh, so John standard. bought you a reroll too, so if you need it, nice. Okay, and then uh, oh, yeah, no such thing. <laughs> I've got so I've got two successes with using my determination. Mm -hmm. already and i'll take the three i'll save the momentum for the others in case they need it for something and i will just roll these three come on schwartz all 20s all 20s <gasps> all 20s no a two a two and a nine i will take five successes please yes <laughs> Wait, uh, that's, that's five, and plus the two I had from the determination. That's like seven. <laughs> Even if I tried to cancel any of that, it would, yeah. <laughs> well, and then and then yeah, because she's gonna roll a lot of uh, damage dice. What is your phaser set at? Murder eight. <laughs> no, no it would have been on stun. It would have been severe on... stun. He's gonna have a hell of a headache when he wakes up. <laughs> yeah. Too bad it wasn't, but yeah, I mean, it would have been stunned because, you know, he wouldn't have wanted to, he wouldn't want to take people in for questioning, so it would have been on stun. Okay, so um, non, even, non lethal. Even with any kind of resilience he would have, uh, that's enough. So, he is struggling with, you know, with the, the massive Klingon. He looks like he's getting that phaser ready to just shoot you point blank. Um, but you managed to hit him right in the side. Um, kind of 
arcs up, seizes, and then falls into your arms. Uh, well, actually, yeah. I mean, since I've got him grappled, I'm holding him <laughs> up. Like, yeah. As soon as she hits, I just kind of, not too gently, but just drop him to the floor. <laughs> Thump. Yep. Nice. Um, That's the best role I've had. First part of the season or or this part, too. It's the best one. And of course, of course, you'd have the, the great role when defeating my nemesis. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, at that point, uh, the administrator is just kind of like looking up at you guys like, well, you're actually Starfleet. Yeah, would you like me to treat you now? Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, Ping on growl and start to work. Yeah. He's your medic. Yeah. Do what? Do, do you have a, <laughs> he's like he's the medic. <laughs> do you have a non Klingon medic? Look, I studied under Federation Starfleet. Jeez, I'm having problems today. I'm sorry, I veterinary. Star- yeah, I studied in Starfleet. <laughs> I am the best that you're going to get. Okay. Hmm. Just be brave. <laughs> Rajan's going to tie a, you know, commander up here. The space zip tie? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't uh, care if it bruises a little either. He is heavily <laughs> stunned. Um, he will come around, but if you want him to come around sooner, you're going to have to, to treat him, uh, which would be easy. But he is very <laughs> much unconscious. Uh, I see. You ser- oh, go ahead. Do you search him at all? Yeah, absolutely. Take so that he's got her away for Pete's sake. Yeah, he has his phaser, um, he has his comm badge, and then he has what appears to be a nondescript communication device on him. Uh, this does not look like it is uh, Federation standard. Um, you don't recognize it. It's not Cardassian, it's not Romulan, but it is definitely just like, you know, it's it, it's clearly high tech, but you can't pinpoint a source right away. He has and a you... space burner phone. <laughs> 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 And you yeah. said the phaser was acting a little bit differently than just a standard Starfleet issue, right? When you look at the phaser, the phaser has a button on the side. Um, you're not certain exactly what the phaser would do or what the button would do unless you push it or you take time to examine it. Let's not push that button. Yeah, I saw the fifth element. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> For audience at home, not where I was going with this, but now I kind of <laughs> wish I had. <laughs> Uh, you cool. know what? We need to well, let's get him secured in, in a cell. Yeah. And I had to, I hate to say it, I need to see a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't um, too stress. Uh, <laughs> doctor, tend thyself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's our, uh, Rosrin's going to, um, you know, message, you know, calm talks and, and Commander Halata. And uh, he's like, um, we need you here quite quickly. We have just apprehended. Commander Robinson, was it Robinson? Jacobson. 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 Jacobson, who appeared to have a quite injured Administrator Vol. Just Bring look them. over at the commander and say, I guess he's not going to meet us at the runabout. Well, I mean, he is. Bring them both to the runabout, please. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to look. I'm going to look at Lieutenant Roser and be like, Why does it always get shot with you? You put a security officer somewhere, there's going to be phaser fire. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Come on, let's get these people up and and move on. So uh, you make it back to the runabout. Uh, Both teams make it to the the runabout safely um, with all of your prisoners in tow. Um, A couple of security guys do notice you either frog marching people through the the spaceport or uh, an unconscious person. Um, but, uh, you you get inside the runabout, uh, you shut the door, you've now assembled everyone. What are you doing next? <laughs> uh, Rosalind has the communication, the odd communication device, hands it to Halata and says, I swear if it's T- Gulta Kenny on the other end of this, I am so going after that Cardassian. Can I, uh, rig up, like, the runabout has little crew quarters, they're not very big. Can mm-hmm. I rig it up so that they have, uh... Instead of the door shutting, they just have force fields there. Actually, on the runabout, you know that the uh, transporter pad can also be used as a makeshift brig. It has a built-in function which turns off the transporter ability and puts in a force field. I like I like that you know more than I do. I, this is very nice. I like being told that I should have <laughs> known something. That's I, I love it, actually. 
Um, so yeah, let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll toss all three of them in there. It's just trying to help. No, no, no. I actually really appreciate it because I, <laughs> I skip over certain things because I forget about them. Four. I appreciate you being here. Uh, you, you have four, four successes? Oh, no, no we we're have, not. We have four, four prisoners. prisoners. Four prisoners. We're not going to toss the administrator in there. Okay. We're going to yeah. play good. Yeah, Somebody's going to play good cop with him. Um, okay. Look, he got me shot. I want to toss him in with the others. <laughs> they might kill him, so that's, that's a pr- probably a good idea. And there's our bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew it'd work itself out. <laughs> so, um, you've got your three prisoners. Um, do you try to wake up Jacobson at all? He is I still out him. cold. If they don't, I do. I he wakes up. Wake him up. <laughs> and Roger's like, yeah, up. at least somebody was there to see that shot. <laughs> good he shot. All- it was a good shot. <laughs> he sees all of you. Kind of reflexively reaches for where his communicator was, realizes it's gone, and then is like, "I'm not saying anything." Oh, uh, so should we act like the the justice here and just go ahead and record you when it's illegal and not admissible in court, or do you want to just give up what's going on before Katrina and her accomplice here do? Because it's really. It's it's a race to the finish to see which one of the three of you tells me what happened first. From inside the cell, you hear, don't tell him anything if you know it's good for you. Sounds like that guy is going to get stunned, or he's going to get uh, phasered <laughs> until he can't talk anymore. And, and Roger's like, like nobody it. asked your opinion. <laughs> you, got her riled, or you got him riled up, like, listen, I'm <laughs> offering you a chance to just talk. Rosman will just shoot you, right, Jacobson? <laughs> You know what? I'm already dead. Are you? Not yet. You're in the good hands of the the crew of this USS Serenitis. We wouldn't let that happen. Yeah, how do I know that one of you isn't just going to kill me when the others aren't looking? Well, I'm not going to kill you. How deep do you think this thing goes? Yeah. I don't know. I've been in the Gamma Quadrant for years. Hey, look. I haven't killed you yet, and you shot me, so... Have that in good faith that I haven't killed you yet. Yeah, you should be dead. Maybe you should be a better shot. I mean, yeah. Look, apparently you don't shoot Klingons very often. It takes a little more than that to stop us. Guy inside the cell goes, I've shot Klingons before. Yeah, and how'd that work out for you? Many what did I Klingons. say? Nobody asked your opinion. I mean, be he's confessing to other crimes. Let him, let him talk. Uh, so the one that's saying that is the one that had the illegal disruptor? Yep. Okay. Uh, can we lower the force field, pull Jacobson out, and put it back up? Yeah. So I want to do that. And then sit him down. I assume he's space zip died still. And say, listen. I I guarantee you that the absolute worst case scenario that's going to happen is you're going to come to the Gamma Quadrant with us where we're going to take care of you and make sure you don't get hurt. Like, that's the absolute worst case. Commander Halata will make sure that you are not hurt because of any confession you make. But if you can exonerate my brother or at least mitigate what has happened and what what is his fault, I'm more than willing to put the full strength of Starfleet behind this to make sure that whatever is causing this is taken care of. You promise? You have my word as an officer and as a bullion. All right, well, my debt's on your hands. Uh, yeah, so it's not intergalactic terrorists. Or this was a job by the Orions. Oh, man, the Orions. They ju- right. We were just interested in the trilithium. It's not even one buyer. That stuff's literally gold. I mean, not replicated gold. That stuff's worthless. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Just took the cargo, sold it. It somehow gotten dropped off the manifest. No one even going to notice it was going missing. But then bureaucrats started to get involved. And then so we had to cover our tracks. And uh, yeah, the administrator over there. Yeah, he owes a lot of money. He owes a lot of money, don't you? And the administrator bowl just kind of tightens up. It's like not that much. Uh, that's not what uh, that's not what Mulk said, is it? 
the the mog said, is it? Oh, oh, I hate that guy. He smells uh, like like onion. I don't know what an onion is, but if it's that <laughs> stuff he smokes, it's really bad. I'll look over at Rosrin, and I'll look back. I suppose it does smell like trills. Yes. Um... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You, you smell a little bit like onion, Rosalind. Sorry. Look, Looking I'm going to do mold. something about it in a minute. Can we continue with the, you know, confession part and worry about what I smell like later? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I am bleeding a little bit over here. Here, I'll help you. I like that the Klingon is like, ow, ow. <laughs> half Klingon. They shot yeah. his human half. Yeah, they shot the human half. <laughs> um. <laughs> I will tap my com badge again and attempt to get a hold of... Or, uh, hold on. I'm going to look at Jacobson and say, who else was in on this? Honestly, we don't operate that way. Not one person that we, we just... That gives all the command. But... All right, look. No one else here was involved. In this Me, room? Yeah, well, no. I mean, there are other people outside this room. No. All right. Uh... Yo-Yo Gar, who's the, the, the smelly bol- mog, he's in it. Uh, his little chummy sidekick, Flart's in on it, too. Uh, can't really give you the name of our caretaker, because uh, I don't know who that is. But Look, come on. Like, I, I can't explain this stuff to you. The, the longer I talk, and from the inside the cell you hear, the quicker you're going to die, man. And, you know, Jacobson just kind of flinches. Is, is Vintir Khan involved? No. You're but, sure? No, he's going to lose his job. Why? Because a kiloton of trilithium disappeared on his watch. Look, he's good at what he does. It took a little bit to outsmart him. Uh, the virus that we had the administrator and your brother upload? Yeah, the, the chaos it caused may helped us get the, tri- the trilithium off planet. But uh, no, things have started to go south. And your brother, if he had kept his word, he would have just gone down, and as we told him, we would have paid, gotten him out of that colony. He would have had to serve a couple months, you know, like, just, just that. No, apparently, he's just, like, some kind of do-gooder over here. And, well, now we're all in trouble. Um, well, us, bless you. So, Tox is going to grab him by the collar and slam him against the wall Ow. and scream, are you one of the one of them that attacked my brother and threatened my family? No. Kind of looks over at the guy in the cell. And you hear from the cell, oh screw you. <laughs> also onion we know where onion dude is, so Yeah, we can always pick him up. I mean just follow the smell, right? <laughs> uh, I'll let go of him. And uh Commander, I think that we, I think that we contact the jackass. I agree, unfortunately. Magistrate Valorian. No, yes. I, no, I pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I'll get in touch with him. I mean, we're gonna have to give dip- depositions, but I mean, I I don't think he, this is anything he can ignore, and he's gonna be more thrilled getting some Orion syndicates under his uh, <laughs> record than just one lone bullion. Considering Ideally. he had to do his job for him. Actually, <laughs> Commander? Yes. Can I contract, contract the magistrate? Absolutely. I will uh, I will position the camera that will go to the, like, the commu- comm screen so that it catches nobody but me and other Starfleet members. Not even the, not even Jacobson, like just the crew of the Serenitis, mm-hmm. and I will call him uh, on the comm screen. What was the assist? I'd like to speak with the magistrate, magistrate, please. I'm afraid he is quite busy. If you want to contact tomorrow during our proper office hours? I think that I, sure. I think that it's of the highest Starfleet security that he uh, answer this call right now. Otherwise, the Ryan Syndicate could steal more 
trilithium resin. And do you really want that to be on your head because you wouldn't let him take a call? At that point, like, he's almost shoved out of the way as the magistrate <laughs> appears. <laughs> he was just off his, like... <laughs> Sorry, what are you talking about? So here's the proposition. You will make sure my brother gets the lightest sense possible for being an unknowing accomplice. And I will hand you a Starfleet officer and a member of the Orion Syndicate, as well as an administrator from Bolius that were involved in the theft of the Trilithium resin. How do I know I can believe? Because you can interview them as much as you want. Do your due diligence, go through this slowly and methodically, and you will see exactly what we found. I think we can make that arrangement, provided my office is the one that gets to reveal the arrest. If you take care, of, if you take care of my brother and make sure that he gets the absolute lightest sentence possible, understanding that his family was threatened with with violence by the syndicate, then I, then I have no problem with that. But you have to be more diligent in the future. Don't jump. Bring your evidence to Starfleet Command, and I will review it, and I promise you, I will review it fairly, as okay, you well, would judge it fairly. We have four prisoners. Four prisoners? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I did. Um, we have four <laughs> prisoners, one of which is concerned about being killed by the Orion Syndicate. I need to know that he is going to be protected very well, too. We can arrange that, especially if the syndicate is involved. Okay. The, I, we will have them to you within the next half hour. Tax. We also have names of two more people he can go arrest. Yes, Commander. The, uh, uh, the Commander is correct. Thank you. Uh, there is also a mulk named Yo-Yo Gar, and he has an accomplice named... Vlart. Vlart. I was going to call him Squig, but that was <laughs> honestly pretty close. Um, you'll find them at a cafe. They, they, they frequent a cafe... And I'll give him the address. But you can't miss the bulk. He smells like onion. Seven foot tall. Smells like onion. Oh, okay. Well, then. <laughs> you surely stick out amongst the Bolians. Mm -hmm. Right. Very well. Thank you, Magistrate. Click comment. <laughs> um, so, uh, you. Bring all of your prisoners um, to Starfleet Command. Um, as you try to pick up the phaser and the comm, the strange-looking phaser and comm, they self-destruct in front of you. And Jacobson says, that's just how the tech operates. It was going to destroy itself eventually. Hmm. Seems about right. But um, you, as they go there, and Jacobson just looks cagey, but you manage to get him into Starfleet Command, where he is immediately taken away by security, taken to a secure cell. Um, uh, you're all waiting in a conference room, just sitting in, at tables, when the door opens, and in walks um, the the Bolian, uh, who's, even though I wrote up the character, I just forgot his name, uh, Bintir. Bintir uh, Colonel Bint yeah, Bintir Khan steps in with your brother, and your brother is not in restraints in any way. Nice. Your brother... I I, I'll go over and hug him. Like, he hugs you back. Yeah. Uh, the colonel addresses the whole room. Uh, thanks to you, we've made a series of other arrests. Although one of the people you implicated, uh, the uh, rather smelly uh, Molg, seems to have disappeared. Uh, but we are trying to find him. Uh, but thanks to several of the arrests and the prisoners you've given us, we're certain we're going to be able to rid several elements of the syndicate from Bolius. Good. Excellent. Uh, I would have appreciated you notifying me before going around and pointing phasers at Bolians, but honestly, your efforts were incredibly effective. I didn't point a single phaser at any Bolians. I just tapped it. There was implication of violence. There was no threat. Things kind of progressed faster than we were expecting. Yeah, and we didn't point any phasers at any Bolians. We just pointed at another Starfleet <laughs> officer. 
Yeah, we're clear on this. <laughs> okay, we can't shoot people on Bolius. It's kind of one of our laws. It's, it's big law here. Don't shoot Bolians. Don't shoot anybody. But it would have definitely I, been our preference that to have that not happen for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, as like they're kind of chatting, I'll pull Ven aside quietly and say, uh, "Listen, I I did what I could, but what you did." was a problem. I know you were in a bad spot and I did everything I could, but I'm pretty sure you're going to see some sort of punishment from this. I've spoken with the colonel and I've spoken with the magistrate and I'm going to get a four month sentence at a rehabilitation colony. It's supposed to be really nice. Um, there's gardening and meditation and going to classes. Uh, um, and if I'm a model, um, guest at the facility then they'll let me out and they might commute my sentence apparently there were extenuating circumstances on the fact that you brought in so many criminals so they they gave me the lightest possible sentence which was intentionally damaging equipment um but you've saved my life literally and i i can never repay you you don't have to repay me we're family Also, did you threaten a guy? They said you threatened a guy with a phaser. I, there was an implication that I didn't actually. Threatening says that I would pull it out and point it in a direction towards him. At least all I did was tap him, tap it, and tell him that I'd shoot him, and that maybe I didn't remember what setting the phaser was on, which isn't the truth because like protocol tells us that we always keep it on on stun. Like I'm not going to keep it above stun. That's dangerous. That's just dumb. Why would you do that? But did, did like one of you shoot a human? Um, that was the doctor, or no? That was that was our that was the security officer, and that wasn't just human. It was a Starfleet officer, and he had to come. You can just shoot Starfleet officers. Well, they uh, shoot us first. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the when the situation demands it, <laughs> and not other times. <laughs> then when you get done at the at the rehabilita rehabilitation colony, come see me out on the Serenitis. That, the engine is beautiful. Oh, I'd love to see it. Uh, I don't think they're going to let me continue in my career, but they said that the colony actually has a really good placement program. So sure. I'm probably going to go back to work, probably on a research outpost. Good. Nice. Uh, and it is with that that we are ending our, uh, our uh, episode for tonight. Nice. All right, you guys did want to send an email to the um the JAG uh officer with some perfectly highlighted like laws and stuff <laughs> as a courtesy. Love it. Um he's you're kind of speaking his language, and no, he's not like hitting on you, but he's very much like a formidable Ooh. legal mind. All right, I enjoy this challenge. <laughs> so kind of like playing chess. Nice. Nice. We start a pen pal relationship. That's wonderful. Discussing. <laughs> You're walking around the ship going, ooh, that is not how that interpretation of the law works. He should know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe um, he'll be a better JAG officer. <laughs> or as the chat has named him, maybe one day he'll be a better JAG off. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. For our East Coast friends. Um <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you all for showing up tonight. I hope that the audience, hope you all had fun watching us. Uh, remember to uh, follow us and subscribe. And remember that uh, you get a free subscription through your Amazon Prime account. Uh, we've also got some incredible shows coming up in the future. Uh, we've got on the first, we've got 7C by Leaps and Bounties at 8 o'clock. Uh, on Sunday, the 6th, we've got the Illuminated Page special one-off game starting at 5. Next Monday, we've got some boring guy running Star Trek. I mean, if you like this session, then I think you'll think the next session's okay. Because it's me again! <laughs> uh, I will be running next Monday uh, at 8 o'clock. And then um, on the 11th? Uh, for let's, for uh, Seriously, Let's Play, Matt? The 12th. Uh, the, the 12th. 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 I apologize. Yeah. It, it's, really, it's an awesome show. For Seriously, Let's Play, they're playing Battletech at 2 o'clock. One of my favorite universes. Um... And so, uh, just remember uh, to follow all of our shows, to hit that subscribe button, and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and YouTube. And all right. links are in chat. We are going to raid another channel, I think, here in a second. I'm waiting for confirmation from my uh, super secret 
computer voice in the background that's probably looking desperately for someone to raid right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to raid Q times, so hang around. They are also playing Star Trek. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, thank you guys very much for coming out. We had a blast. I hope you guys had fun too. Yeah. Thank you again to all the players. Bye. Live long and prosper. Yeah. <laughs>